said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. That was like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil. No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime. Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time. Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark. Yeah, peeling back the layers, exposed to him more. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Didn't think to mind something wicked, no alibi. <laughs> I pick the true crime Don't go with dark realities every time Welcome in, everybody. It is Sunday, fun day here, and it is January 21st, 2024. I want to welcome everybody back into LTL True Crime Live, and uh, I have a fun guest with me. I found I found someone over here, and uh, I like this. Tonight, I was just saying to Tom, I like spending these Sunday nights with Tom, and uh, how are you, Tom? How's things? Just wonderful. Wonderful. How about you? It's well. I mean, this uh, I had to work all day yeah. and literally on all day on my mind was just coming home and doing my show because this, this is what I love to do. Isn't this something that just takes you over your brain and you start thinking this, this, this. I got to talk about that. And you make a notes and yeah. I, love it. I absolutely love being here and I love it's doing over. this. It just takes over. It does. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing that's going on here in Massachusetts. It's an amazing, powerful movement that we have continued to push forward, even though we don't have the uh, the man on the mountain at the top right now. But we're doing everything we fucking can to fill in. Soon, and, uh, soon, he's coming back soon. It's been soon. Uh, it's too it's, long. Yeah, it's, it's been enough. It's been a real pleasure being able to be able to do that and have the opportunity to do that and. Um, just keep pushing forward this free Karen Reed movement. And I have a good feeling, a fucking fantastic feeling about February 15th. You know, I do. You, know, you, 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 you pray every day 
and you, you wonder how she gets through it the day and the next day comes up and you wonder how she gets through that day it's I, and she does it so man i don't know how she does it's, it's um you know i i look at it this way i, I look at myself and i just say you know i the stress that I go through because, you know, we're advocates, we're advocates for, for Karen, we're, we're, we're people, we're supporters. We go out and, and do these, these, uh, you know, these peaceful protests and the standouts and, and go ahead. We, we are, but it's unfortunately it's the bigger picture. It's Karen could be any one of yeah. us, you know, so it's Karen. Absolutely. The poor girl's getting railroaded here. It could be any one of us. And that's mm -hmm. the sad part. Mm -hmm. So if we don't say, all right, enough is enough. It's going to just continue. Think, think of what if Aiden did not mention this at all. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I mean, Where oh, my. Would be? Who'd believe what she, who'd believe these, who'd believe these crazy, crazy things? <laughs> well, who would believe all these crazy people? <laughs> what do you mean? There's, there's no pictures of the crime scene. What are you mm -hmm. talking about? What, it right. wasn't flipped off. No, no, come on now. No way. Right. All right. I just want to get to this real quick. Kim, thank you so much for becoming a new member. I appreciate that. And James, thank you so much for becoming a member and a supporter as well, too. All right, Tom, we got to, We're going to talk about um, cast information and the Celebrite extraction. And what I want to do tonight is just give a little bit of a background of what that is. I am not a cast expert. I'm not a Celebrite expert uh i did some little digging around on the on the old interwebs and uh pulled up some some videos that we can go over but the biggest thing that i want to do tonight and i've talked about this on the show and i think it's very important that people watch this video tonight is alec murdoff in alec murdoff's trial uh there was a special agent matthew weil that ended up testifying during that trial and talked about cast uh information in geofencing and extractions and it is such a fascinating testimony. And I'm going to tell you why it's very important. And it was like I'm sitting there and I'm doing the hosting on Turtle Boy's channel last night. And we're and I'm watching the microdots video. And I'm like, he starts talking about geofencing on there. And I said, I have to do this live because I've been meaning to do it. But the great thing about this is everybody's going to be able to follow along of what's going on and how important this is. Because essentially, this little fun device that we hold in our hand all the time and we That's talk and we run all our business through, it is going to be able to tell you everything about someone, where they are, where they've been, who they're with, <laughs> who they're trying to talk to. And Tom, tell them a little bit about the Windows programs you were telling me about and essentially how that translates to how these phones work. So back in the days when computers were coming up, it was Windows 95. And those Windows 98, and they had problems with that. Then they had Windows 98 Second Edition, Windows Millennium. Um, they come up Windows 2000, and when they did that, every, when you install Windows in the computer, by default, Windows turns on every single service that it can possibly use. Like, for example, you can use your computer to fax. It turns the fax service on in the background. Um, Every service is on. So by default, these computers are all on the internet talking back and forth, looking for a fax, looking for this, looking for that, blah, blah, blah. By default, they're all on. And wouldn't you know, that translates to what we now have, these things that are so chatty, it's ridiculous. This is more chatty than a computer. Because if I sit with Brian, now my phone knows what Brian's phone is looking at. So the algorithms that are in my phone are talking to the algorithms that are within range of this phone, whether it's Brian or whoever. That's how much our phones talk to each other, and people mm -hmm. don't realize that. Yeah. I, can, I can turn my phone into a hotspot, and anyone that has their hotspot on, on browse, like I'll bang, I got gotcha. you. So, yeah, it's not, not hard. It's really, it's, it's really easier than people want to believe. Great question. Midlife Nancy said, how much we raised for Aiden last night? So the total that I heard, the total that came in was $1,500 in about two hours. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Good we job. appreciate it. And it indeed helps. And Aiden was very thankful. I heard many, many chats come back to me today 
uh, people that had talked to him and said that um, he was very thankful for what happened last night. So we'll continue to do that once a week. You know, we'll we'll host over there and, and we'll get different guests that come in. I do not sleep. No. Carrie knows I don't sleep. I talk to Carrie all the time. I, I this is literally my 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 life is this. <laughs> I get up, I go to bed at about 12 30, 1 o'clock in the morning after I'm done doing all, all this. So I'm about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. I sleep hopefully for about five hours. If you're lucky. If I'm lucky. I'm up at six. I go immediately to get breakfast, sit down, and I work on my channel. And then I and then that then if I'm not going to the gym that day, it's just I work on my channel until I go to work. I go to work, do my day job, come home. I literally run home, <laughs> get here and prepare, get everything all last minute set up, my lighting and make sure everything's working, do my show, and then just repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat every single day. I've committed myself for a year to make this happen. And if it doesn't happen, it's okay. Um I will oh, readjust. Whether you want to or not, guy, it's happening. You're I'll on readjust the way and up. make it happen. You're on so, the way up, but you're good. We all, yeah, you know, we all are. We're all doing it. But anyway, I don't want to yeah, talk about that. But let's bring some of this up. So what I did was I found a – oh, I'm going to get Tom on here. I found a field manual. I'm not going to be able to go through all of it because it's 139 pages. But what I will do is I will drop that um, in the chat. I probably work about over 100 hours a week easily between my – full-time job and this full-time job. Um, but I'll drop that in the chat. And, you know, I was just going to page through some of this, but I really want to get to the te the testimony. And before I get to that Murdoff testimony, I want to play Jackson's testimony from, uh, well, his, I don't think it's testimony. He's just speaking at the hearing. Yeah, I guess it would be testimony. <laughs> so when Jackson stands up and talks about, uh, the extractions, the five extractions. Remember last time? So we'll play yep. a little bit of that yep. to refresh, and then we'll go into the uh, special special agent. Okay, so this field menu, I dropped the uh, link in there in the chat. It is unclassified, so anybody can read it. So I'm not doing anything wrong. It even says unclassified on it. It's a field source guide. And this basically will give you a rundown of like what cast information is and what it does. It's a fantastic manual and has 139 pages, so I'm not going to read through over it, all of it, but um, we'll talk about, you know, like on the first page, CAS brings unique expertise to cases in which cellular tele uh, telephone information servers are important to evidentially roll in an investigation. When necessary, CAS will utilize uh, industry standards, survey gear uh, to drive test equipment and determine the truth geographical coverage, breadth, of a cell site sector. So it's going to be able to basically nail you down to a very specific spot of where you are or where you said you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you'll get historic cell, uh, cell data. You'll get F F FBI informants and liaisons and contacts. They use this in for, uh, foreign uh, fugitive warrant data and Megan's uh, uh, SO registry laws. Uh, other divisions of crimes such as shootings, robberies, other da data to the team appropriate such as visas, cameras, ca case information. You can get everything from this. Future, fugitive uh, apprehension, informant development to enhance uh, the investigation for all investigative purposes. Um, and again, here's what CAST, people are like, what does CAST mean? It's Cellular Analyst Survey Team, CAST. The mission of CAS program is to support the FBI along with state and local and tribal investigations through the analysis of cellular call detail records, CDRSs, and other associated tower information. Um, so again, I'm not going to really read through this. I just want people to know about it. And it'd be great if you can, if you have time, look through the field manual and I'll put that up there. I just didn't want to spend too much time because I do want to get to the testimony tonight because it is... It's about an hour and 20. Um, and then uh, you're going to add something, Tom? Go ahead. No. Okay. just I, That manual, if there's anybody, like Olivia, if you could look into that manual. Yeah. Like, she'd tear that apart. Uh, yeah, and she had some really great uh, posts about cel cel uh, Celebrate uh, probably about a week ago on her Twitter account. I was just kind of reading through that. It was really good stuff. Uh, Michelle, oh, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate the support. I got to bring the bell back. I love the bell. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Uh, so real quick, and then just something with Celebrite here. If you want to go on, I'll drop the link for their uh, platform as well. I think it's important for people to go over that and educate yourself. But I thought this video was really good. Um, I'm going to play this about a three-minute video. It says, Investigative Analytics, how to refute an alibi defense using the mutual locations feature in Celebrite Pathfinder. We'll play this. <clears throat> if it will play. <laughs> it was playing earlier. <laughs> Come on. Maybe not. It don't want to work, Tom. They, they've done this before. So, you know, that that's that's the thing. That's all this company does is cellular stuff. And it's not gonna play. We'll just they, go to whoa, that's fine. They, they're it. They're the they're the, the ones that can put that cell data all together in a visual format that you and I can interpret. Yeah, they essentially can crack like ISO. <laughs> that's what they do. They crack an ISO. Uh let's see. Here we go. This is some of the things. How to refute an alibi using the mutual locations feature in Celebrite Pathfinder. Digital data collected from a suspect can reveal significant information that can be valuable to criminal investigations. The Celebrate Pathfinder digital analytics platform analyzes this data and provides the investigator with relevant leads that can shed light on the suspect's activity and verify their alibi. So Olivia in the chat, good to see you, Olivia. Uh, she says, Cellhawk is a digital location digital forensic tool there is a so their software is unbelievable yeah i'll have to check that out but this stuff is really i want to dig like I, i'm i'm really just doing a brief overview tonight i haven't really had a major chance to get into this but i it's something that i want to read up a lot more and i do want to educate myself on that field manual because i think there's really important stuff in there and that's what i said you know i was saying about these cases even when i had melanie little on and tom could probably uh contest to this too you know i think going forward the future of uh, law enforcement and crime investigating and, and busting cases is going to be, uh, you know, everything that's in this little phone because we we're, carry it everywhere. We're already there. I yeah. mean, we're, I mean, what a better tool to look at who is doing what than a person's phone, you yeah. know, who's in it. Now you look at who's in it, who who's in their phones and yeah. who's in their phones, you know, and they have us all modeled, by the way, you know that. Yeah. Like I fit a profile. Mm -hmm. That someone in California or, or Washington State fits, yeah. and they know what we're gonna buy tomorrow. They already know yeah. it. Like I fit a profile. The phone really, helps that. Oh, 100 percent. And there's really um, an interesting video that I would direct you to. I can't play it because I'll get nailed. Um, for some reason, Joe Rogan just doesn't like people playing his content. But if if you ever go watch um, Joe Rogan, Edward Snowden, and he talks essentially how they cracked iPhones and how they crack iPhones and what they're listening to and what the data they're gathering. It's a fantastic episode. Um, it was quite a few years ago, but if you just type in Joe Rogan, uh, uh, Edward Snowden and and listen to that, it tells you everything about cracking a cell phone. If you listen to anything, listen to what Edward Snowden says, everything he says is true. Everything. Yeah. It's all backed up and verifiable. All, all that's happening. So let's play this celebrate and then we'll get into um, the testimony. And I, I'm really excited to hear that again. I've heard it a couple times, but I want it's it's really good. Alibi. A core feature in Pathfinder is the ability to map out a suspect's geographic location. And that that's important. This is what I wanted people to hear. This is what the software does when they extract. It'll say Tom was there. He was in this specific place and Tom left and went 10 feet. And Tom went five feet and six inches. I mean, it can nail you all down. It's it's incredible stuff. Their accomplices whose devices were also seized. This combined data view is called mutual locations and can be a key factor in investigators efforts to refute or corroborate an alibi. In this scenario, we will review data obtained from Ruth Langmore's mobile device. She is a known drug dealer in Washington. In this case, an agent at the local police department was informed about a drug deal that is about to happen. Subsequently, Ruth's house was raided and her phone lawfully seized. After uploading and analyzing the phone's data, more information was revealed. Incredible. This additional evidence enabled the police to arrest four other gang members, see whose that? devices we can connected. now see on the left side of the initial dashboard screen in Pathfinder. See, it, like you said, Tom, because yep. all those phones were talking to each other. So it connected all those people, but plus all the messages. Know, 
You don't need to text any of them people or call them or anything. The phone does it automatically just by being near that person. Unbelievable. Yep. In her statement, Ruth had previously denied ever having met the person of interest one more time. Since both are central to this case, we want to establish if her denial is legitimate or not. Let's see how the mutual locations feature within Pathfinder can assist us. First, let's open the Map View tab, which you can find in the upper toolbar, and then we'll navigate to the Faceted Filters pane on the left and select the owners we want to investigate. Let's select Juan I don't and Ruth, software. then click Apply. <laughs> it's no, huh? badass. Yep. If we scroll down the left sidebar, we can find and then select the locations facet. This will allow us to see if there was any mutual activity occurring between Ruth and Juan in close proximity to each other. To do this, we will check the show activities with location box, then select a proximity range within 100 feet of each other and a time range of 30 minutes, see that? then click apply. What we can now see on the map is whether a meeting between our persons of interest could have occurred. Here, we can see that there is a result from the mutual location search shown by the square. To get more details, we can click on the little arrow on the right sidebar and expand the panel. The suspects are represented here by dots in different colors. Yellow is for Ruth and green is for Y. Unreal. Now focus on the location point and zoom in. Here, we can see the two dots at the same location <laughs> and time on the map. <laughs> Both were at the Hyatt Regency Baltimore Hotel on the 8th of July. With this, this is important, people. This is why I wanted to play this stuff, because you're going to hear Jackson talk about this. Okay. And not only did they have Celebrite, they had four more extractions of this data. So they ran it through four more programs. Yeah, and just this like is gonna... Go ahead. Go ahead. The four other programs are similar to this, by the way. Yeah. They just it, made by a different company. They do the same thing, so you get the same result because facts are facts. And they're it's going to confirm everything. So we're now, gonna know who has the truth when all this comes out in court. Who is telling the truth? We know who's we know who's telling the truth. We know who's not telling the truth. Now, listen, I want everyone to take notes in the last 30 seconds because um when it's done, you'll have a certificate saying um <laughs> you're Trooper Garino now. Because yeah, right. <laughs> this is what he did is he went through their training online on this software. Yeah. Or the, 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 the version no the version prior to the version that they're using now. He was using version four point one or whatever number it was, mm -hmm. not not version five. It's right. So they got a new version and found the, the deleted deleted uh two twenty seven search that was there. Right. This solid digital evidence, we can now tell detectives to look for security cameras to download footage that could show them together at the same time. And in this way, refute their previous alibis in which they claim to have never met before. So if anybody's interested in, you know, looking more into Celebrite, I'm going to drop the uh, link here in the chat. And I urge everybody to go over and check out more of their videos and, and how their programs work. It's very fascinating. Again, I've got just kind of a little dug a little bit into it, uh, you know, before doing this live. I want to research it more. I know Olivia had some great things on her Twitter about it. So I urge to go over and read her tweets as well, too. Um, but let's get into Jackson. So let me play Jackson first. Oh, by the way, if anybody doesn't know, um, I have a merch store open that i've done um i've done a couple of t-shirts and sweatshirts here if anybody's interested well, uh, that is awesome stuff man this one here yeah i got the, the karen reed was framed on the back we get the justice and we got her quote we know who did it and um nice. i have that one i got the uh i did a jackson i love this one i got the action jackson and then on the back if it walks like a duck it talks like a duck it's a duck and then we got the the white duck there with the free Karen Reed. And then I did a Unetti one last night, which came out really good too. I'm happy with this one. The Unetti. And then on the back, the genie cannot go back in the bottle. I get the little genie bottle there. So if anybody's interested, uh, it's ltltruecrime.com. And that'll get you. I'll drop the link. 
Okay, let's get into um, Jackson. Let's hear Jackson first, and then we'll go to the FBI testimony. Here's Jackson. On January 28th or January 29th. That is provably false. There were no fewer than seven phone calls that we can prove, and we believe that the cell phone records of Jennifer McCabe will likely prove other calls as well. The court has to understand, I think, and it's important to understand, not only do we have information that she deleted materials from our phone <laughs> that we can find <laughs> in the Celebrite extraction, the Axiom extra uh, extraction, uh, the Art uh, the X2 extraction, the Belkasoft extraction, um, the Sanderson extraction. Those are all different tools that our expert has used that established every one of these calls were made. There were also deletions that we can't account for. What do I mean by that? Uh, other people's phones. There was, there was another call made to Julie Albert. She testified to a call having been received from Jennifer McCabe to Julie Albert. She testified to that and there is no data in the Celebrite extraction in Jennifer McCabe's phone to support that. That means that call was deleted and not found. Where would we find that verification? In Jennifer McCabe's cell phone records. <laughs> there was a call made apparently to, or communication made to Karen Reed's phone. We know that to be a fact. It came from Jennifer McCabe's phone. That also was not recovered in the Celebrite extraction. Where would that phone be, I'm uh, sorry, where would that call or communication be verified? In Jennifer McCabe's cell phone records. The screenshot of Brian Albert, that's his, uh, Brian Albert's contact information. We know that there was a screenshot taken on Jennifer McCabe's phone of his contact information. There's only one reasonable explanation for why she would take a screenshot of Brian Albert's contact information, and that would be to conveniently share that contact information with another person. We know the first half of that, that the screenshot was taken and deleted. We don't know the second half. But this information would reveal it, and we're trying to verify that. Again, this is all new information that was unknown to the defense in or around September of 2022 when we filed our first motion. This all right, I'm just going to stop there because I, I think we kind of get, you know, where we're going at here. So again, um, you know, we'll get into this testimony. I think it's really interesting. And the great thing about it is the special agent, uh, Matthew Wild, really... And I don't mean it to say it this way. Well, I guess dumbs it down for us laymen to understand what's going on here. Because again, I'm not an expert, but I think it's very important that everybody hears this because um, it just nails people. <laughs> it's just, just no way out of it. And, All and right. You, you got to realize, right, that these pieces of software that they're talking about, back to the cell phone stuff, I mean, you can read every single phone that's out there not just the samsung not not just the tablet not 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 just an apple they read every single type of cell phone and they put that data together so even the cheapest walmart phone right the 99 dollar phone at the burner oh, yeah, is you get it. expensive as in just as talkative as the, the $2,000 phone, they, they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. Fact. Yeah. It's, if that thing's on a network, it's trying to communicate with each other. Maps asking, I wonder who they sent the screenshot to. And Scott says, uh, corrupt trooper Proctor and Grano uh, purposely ignored and manipulated phone extraction, celebrate geofencing data to protect the, the McAlberts. Well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to learn in this video, they, they can figure it out. <laughs> it's a very good testimony. All right. We got a little, little while here through this testimony. I appreciate everybody watching this. I think you're going to find a lot of value in this. And I think a lot of people are going to walk away today with wow on their face. If you haven't seen this or just know how this technology works, you're going to get a first clan, first class look at it right now in about an hour and 20 minutes and your mouth's going to drop because watch how close they put Murdoch to that murder scene. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. All right, here we go. Stay call supervisory special agent oh, Matthew Wild. And by the way, I just want to shout out the channel that I am grabbing this from, the lovely law firm. Uh, if you want to go over, you can go over and subscribe on their channel. They're the only ones that I could find that cut this down out of like a 10 hour trial uh, yeah, for that okay. 10 hour uh, hearing for that day. So um, please go over, give them a subscribe. Just let them know. Thank you. 
I'll just speed it up till he gets on the stand. Oh, maybe it's going to get there. Well, I was watching a little earlier. Sir? Here we go. Where are you employed, sir? I'm a special, I'm a supervisory special Thank agent you, uh, with the FBI. I'm assigned to FBI headquarters, um, but I sit in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Thanks, Lana. Well, specifically, I what are your job duties in Rock Hill, South Carolina? Uh, right now, I supervise uh, five full time uh, agents and about 17 part time uh, folks in my unit, the cellular analysis survey team. Okay. And explain to the jury what the cellular analysis survey team is. So the cellular analysis survey team or CAST is a group of about 80 special agents and task force officers. Um, we're all across the country. And Tom, we'll at any point you want me to pause so you can comment, just let me know. Okay? I'm, I'm all into this guy. Okay, I am too. This is a good yeah. testimony. You're going to learn a lot here today. He specializes in is analyzing historical phone records. Uh, specifically the location data associated with those. All right. And is that something that you do personally in, in your in your job? It is. Okay. Uh, and explain just, just a little more. I know we'll get more when we get into your report, but what do you mean when you analyze cell phone location data? What what are you doing when you do that? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the at the call detail records. Uh, these records are very much like the old paper phone bill uh, we all got in the mail maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they have the date. They have the time that the calls occurred. They uh, tell me who called who. So if I made a phone call or somebody called me, those numbers are listed on there. They have the duration uh, of the call. The major difference between the old paper phone bill we all got in the mail and the records I look at is the records I look at have a cell tower. So they tell me which cell phone tower was used to handle that call. And then they tell me which side of that tower was used to handle the call. And so real quick, I want to just add this too. If anybody in this room follows the Idaho 4 case, this is very relevant in that case as well, too, where they're going to be able to nail down where Brian Koberger was, the said alleged killer that's been in jail for the last year. So if you pay attention to any of the Idaho 4 content, this is extremely relevant in this case, but it's more relevant. Uh, I wouldn't say more, but it's very crucial in this case as well. Very, very crucial. What I do is I take that cell tower information, I can compare it to a list of all the cell phone towers for that carrier, whether it be Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T. Um, and then I can take that date, time, and general location from the cell phone records, and I can compare it to a known date, time, and location. Uh, so most of the time when law enforcement's investigating a crime, uh, they generally know what date, time, and location that incident occurred. Okay. And as part of your uh, cell phone analysis, do you also uh, take location data from directly from phones, uh, if available, and plot that as well? I can do that. Yes, yes, sir. Um, so when law enforcement downloads a phone, uh, it comes in a big report, and there's a location data section on there, and I can also an I can analyze and map that data as well. Okay. And how long have you been doing this cell phone analysis? Um, Real quick, I just want to pull this up. Dino's goes four ninety nine. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, says, uh, but P KP, uh, Kevin, and Coffin Napper and Wendy's son told me different. Yeah. <laughs> <Get the fuck out. laughs> Listen, well, did you hear what he just said? I have no idea. No, but, but all this guy here needs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. All he needs is a download. A no, no, no. All he needs is a location. Yeah. In a date, in a time, Nine. and he'll tell you who was there. Now you tell me, Big Brother isn't watching where y'all going. Right. And I'm glad that everybody's seeing the value in the stream because this is important. And and when I, you know, I kept when I heard the, I had I had the stream in the back of my mind for a while, but it really kicked it back up with micro dots because in thank God I get to watch that video because those videos were amazing. I mean, I felt like it was inside a, a new age documentary or something. It was insane and great do job by Microdots. But wait, wait till she brings the next one out. Yeah. It's um when I saw the, the geofencing, I was like, I got to do that stream tomorrow. I, I People need to know what this is and, and what uh, this information can prove in this case. All right, let's go. Part time since 2012. Uh, full time since about late 2016. All right. And have you undergone any training uh, to uh, help learn cell phone uh, location analysis? I have. I have, I have over 400 hours of training. Um, in 2012, I went to a course called Basic Project Pinpoint. 
where it was uh, three days we learned how to read the records, uh, compare the records to a, a tower list and generate a very basic map. Um, I used that technique in every one of my cases from 2012 till 2016. In 2016, I attended Advanced Project Pinpoint, which was a week-long course. And during that course, uh, we took a deeper dive into the different types of records we can get from the carriers and how to use them. Uh, at the conclusion of that course, I was selected to go to the CAS certification course. At that time, it was four weeks. Uh, the first week being uh, uh, training on radio frequency theory, so learning how radio waves travel between the phone and the tower and then back through the network. Uh, the second week, uh, we, we had trainings from, we had presentations from each of the carriers. So uh, Verizon came into our training. Uh, we learned from the network engineers. Those are the people who design and maintain the network. And we also learned from the records custodians. Those are the people who provide the records to us. So real quick, if you're just coming in, uh, this gentleman's name is a special FBI special agent. His name is um, Matthew Wild. And this is testimony from the Alec Murdoch trial uh, that was just recently, what, about a year ago. Um, and we're going to, he's going to explain in very layman's terms, which was really great about this, about geofencing, data extraction, how cell towers work, and locating uh, people down to a very specific spot. And I think he gets Murdoch within like six inches of, uh, of that murder scene. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. All right, let's do this. Um, the third week, uh, we did uh, drive testing. So I have a piece of equipment I can put in my car. I can drive around a specific cell phone tower. I can figure out generally how far that tower reaches. And then the fourth week was a moot court exercise where uh, we had a real case. We had to read the records, generate a map, go out and do a drive test, and then testify to it. Um, and at the conclusion of that, I was certified. Now, every year since then, I've attended the CAST recertification course. Uh, Every which year. is usually four days where we go and meet, go back and meet with all the carriers. We get technology updates. Um, and then because we're located around the country and sometimes in different parts of the world, uh, we do case presentations to each other, what we're seeing in our respective areas. Okay. Uh, and uh, in your role as a CAS supervisor uh, and prior, have you ever been qualified as an expert in court? Before? Yes. How many times? Um, over 130 times. <laughs> so you've done this a time or two before. Yes, sir. At this end, uh, when you've been qualified before, specifically, what have you been qualified as? I've been qualified as an expert in historical call detail record analysis and cellular technology. All right. And your honor, at this time, state would move to end uh, as Mr. Wild, or excuse me, Agent Wild as a expert in self historical cell phone location analysis, if I said that correctly, sir. Tom, I love shit like this, man. Okay. This is so good. You're so qualified. All right. It's facts. Uh, it's and, so good. Uh, in your role as a cast supervisor, you became involved in this case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And yeah, I don't know, Olivia. Then, I think the guy uh, did it. You became involved. I mean, I'm going to disagree. I believe I so. I wasn't it. a supervisor at the time. I was just a, I was a regular agent. But I was asked in uh, either late, it was, had to be in July of 2021, to provide some assistance in this case. Okay. Uh, and asked by who? Uh, I believe it was Dylan Hightower. Okay. All right. And specifically, at least in July of, of 2021, what did he ask uh, your assistance for? Well, he had obtained uh, a few sets of call detail records on some of the phones in this case. And there was a question as to whether or not where uh, there was a 911 call that was made and the tower that was using that 911, that was the tower that was used to handle that 911 call. Um, there's a question as to whether or not that tower could provide coverage uh, up to Mozo. Okay. And so there was a question about why the 911 call first bounced off a tower in Hampton That's correct. County, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, Moselle, to your knowledge, uh, is in what county? Um, I think it's in Dorchester County. Uh, or could it be Colleton uh, County? Coll I'm sorry, Colleton County, yes. Sir. Uh, and your, ask, your assistance was asked to help figure out if that was possible, someone could be a Moselle and a call could bounce off the tower in Hampton. Yes. Sir. And uh, in the cast team, does it have tools uh, that can assist uh, in figuring that out? Yeah, we have something called the Gladiator Autonomous Receiver. Um, and it's basically a box that we can put in our car. It's a computer and it has a couple of receivers in it. Um, and as we drive around, 
that box maps out the latitude and longitude. So like where we are with the box. And yep. then it measures all the signals from the cell towers that the, um, that the box can see in its area. It's very much like the old Verizon, yeah. can you hear me now commercial? It's just doing that hundreds of times a minute. It's just constantly doing it that as we drive around. And, and just to simplify that a little bit, it would be fair to say that what you, this tool can do is help you map specifically where self co cell coverage exists and where it doesn't. Is that's that correct. Okay. All right. And uh, as you uh, move forward, did you go ahead and conduct that test? I did. Um, myself, uh, as well as um, <clears throat> Dylan Hightower and another agent with the FBI, uh, we grabbed three of those pieces of equipment, three guards. We put them in three cars. And over two days in the beginning of August, we basically drove everywhere all around Moselle, all the way down to Hampton, all the way up to... Um, Police to Earhart and over to 95. Did you also go on a property at Moselle to, to take these measurements? I personally did, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, afterwards, uh, were you asked to uh, prepare a report uh, and to take uh, sell, all these cell records in and prepare a report uh, and provide this report to show locations of various phones involved in this case? Yes, it was. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 458. I'm going to have you take a look at it and see if you recognize it. <clears throat> yeah, this is the report that I generated for this case. All right. And when you say generated, uh, what kind of information did you take in to help you generate that report? Well, so I had to take in the cell phone records, so the records that were received from Verizon. I uh, had to take those in. I had to also uh, take in this, uh, the Cellbrite downloads that came from uh, one of the phones. And then um, I also had to, after we did the drive test, uh, create some maps to kind of show and display that data. Okay, and for this report specifically, uh, uh, there's a couple of numbers that we don't want read, but uh, whose records did you look at? And for uh, Maggie, Paul, and Alex, you can read their numbers. But whose Verizon records did you look at? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the end of your question. I'm sorry. Whose Verizon records did you look at? Oh, I looked at Alex's, uh, Paul's, Maggie's, um, and then there's um, Marty Cook and CB Rowe. Okay. Uh, and did you uh, prepare a report showing locations off of towers uh, where those various phones were on the days and uh, of and surrounding the murder? <clears throat> the general area where the phones were on the days surrounding the murder. And, and you mentioned you got some celebrate data on a, on a phone, correct? Yes. Do you remember who you got that location information from? I got that from uh, Britt Dove at SLED. Okay. Uh, and specifically, whose phone uh, did he, lo whose location data uh, did he provide you? That was uh, Paul's, uh, Paul's location data. All right. And did you uh, plot those locations provided uh, on your report? I did. Uh, and those would include times as well. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, at this time, state would move to enter exhibit 458 in evidence. No objection. Senate so it. All right. And your honor, the state would, would move to enter this under seal because there's some phone numbers included. Uh, I do have a redacted copy that we're going to publish uh, for the ju for, for now in the jury. Uh, in, okay. a, in the audience. Okay. All right. Um, Agent Wild, I'm going to ask you to step down with the court's permission, and we're going to we're going to pull this report up. And this is going to be a little tricky. We got some some tight areas to work in, but can you stand on in that area there? Give me a moment. I'll Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see the screens, which sucks. So, but they'll they'll give good descriptions of what's going on when they start pointing out data. But this is great. I'm already pulled in. I'm so pulled into this already. What do you think, Tom? This is good. This is yeah. this this is how it's supposed to be. How it our true, real extraction of cell phone data should be. These are the same quality of people we expect to be looking at this data. We want this guy. If not, we want someone who's just as smart looking at it because that's going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. um, th this is people don't realize this is this is this is big. 
And I'm already going to guess with the with the feds investigating the investigation, they already knew who what went on inside that house. They already they, knew who was there. They know exactly who was there for how long they were there. They know what app they opened. They know how, you know, what? <clears throat> see what a network you, administrator, man. right? Looks at the, the amount of traffic, the amount of data going from from a phone to the Internet. OK, and each thing's called a packet. And the packet has information where it's going and also how to come back because you send it out. It's like a rubber ball. Send it out. It's going to hit the wall, but it needs the right thing to come back to you so you can catch it and throw it again. Just like that. That's how the Internet works. That's how phones work. It's continuously all the time like that. And the more it can do that with more fingers and more more apps and stuff, the more they, they have your location right. to a dime. I mean, not we're not talking feet here, but the scale of of error are not feet. It, we're talking inches of the scale of error. The error is relatively an inch to two. That's it. Not not feet, an inch. Yeah. Well said, Tom. Let's do this. Okay, um, so Agent Wall, I'm gonna hand you this um, and, and I'm gonna essentially ask you to start uh, going through this report with the jury. That's right, you. Heidi, absolutely, uh, I'm gonna, 100%. I'll probably only interrupt if I feel like- And that's why I'm gonna go back to the Idaho case right now. Supposedly put in airplane mode for those two hours uh, or he turned off, it's still not gonna matter. This phone has always got a low frequency charge going. That's uh, why they- they don't have an off button on the iPhone. They want you to leave it on all the time. They don't want you to shut it off. And even when you try to turn it down and, and, and bring it down, it's still in a low frequency or vibration, still collecting data. Believe me. And the minute that phone turns on, guess where all that information goes? Up to the cloud. <laughs> Unless you know what a Fahrenheit cage is, you're sending data. If yeah. your phone's not in a cage, it's Right. It's Why not do you think that they don't allow you to pull your battery out of your phone anymore? Remember the old cell phones? You slip it out, pull the battery. They don't allow you to do that anymore. You know why? Because they want it running all the time. Yeah. Uh, you just tell me when you need to click to the next slide. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to let you take it away, sir. All right. So the first slide here, this is just uh, who I am, my case number. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so you can go to the Thanks for being here. Uh, the second slide, it just uh, gives a background. So I was asked by... Um, I was asked by SLED to conduct analysis in this case, the first paragraph. Uh, methodology is the second paragraph. So um, again, I take the call detail Ooh. records. Uh, these are kept by the carriers for uh, billing purposes, uh, for some other technical purposes, but um, I take these call detail records. I but Olivia, let me just read this quick. Olivia said, not exactly, but if you put your phone in airplane mode, it will not collect GPS data because it requires a network signal. It will, however, continue to cap capture Apple half data Data, uh, data movements, and also it'll collect uh, uh, telemetry if you've gone up and down, and I think that's probably what she's getting into, the, the Apple health, and like we know about John's phone, ascended up three stairs. Um, it will collect that. I believe it will still collect information off um, apps that are connected as well, um, and that was one of the apps that actually nailed Koberger as well. Um, he had a running app on his phone, and they believe that they've captured some data off of that as to where his whereabouts is. So all those little data apps that you have that are just constantly pulling information, like Tom said, these things are always constantly talking and grabbing and pulling information. And it's still going to, the minute you turn that on or turn it back up to uh, uh, out of uh, airplane mode, all that stuff's going to go up to the cloud. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure about apples, but on on my Samsung, I can turn my Bluetooth on or off, and that's a whole other thing. If my Bluetooth on, does that if I shut off my if I turn on airplane mode, does that automatically shut off my Bluetooth? Because if that, I mean, mm, I don't know. I don't know how that works. My screen, I, my screencast, that's mm -hmm. talking. Yeah. Right. My my what's nearby me? My my quick shares talking. Mm -hmm. It's it's yapping. Yeah, it's yapping all the time. Yeah. Uh, Mimi, thank you so much for the five. Uh, Mimi says, great stream. Thank you. Great photo of Karen there. Love it.
All right, let's play. I compare the cell tower data on those call detail records to a list of towers, um, and they tell me whether that phone is in Hampton, whether that phone's in Charleston, whether that phone's in Spartanburg or Greenville. It gives me a general idea where the phone is. Um, and then, so the cell site locations, so the towers, the towers can change over time, okay? Just in the last couple of years, we've gone from using 3G to using LTE, and now we're all have the 5G bar on our phone, right? So the tower list change, the towers change, um, and we get updated tower lists on a regular basis from the carriers. So I use the tower list that was in effect around the time of the incident, so around the time of June 2021. Um, the survey analysis section. So again, um, we took three pieces of equipment and we basically drove everywhere, all the way around the uh, around this area, around the area trying to record all the signals from the different cell towers. What that gives us is a general area of, it actually maps out the area of where there's coverage from those, those cell towers and cell sectors. Um, and then, yeah, my conclusions, you can go on to the next. So this slide just shows different types of cell phone towers. Okay, I draw your attention to the one on the top left. Uh, we have these, in, these speaker looking devices hanging on this, on this tower. Those are the antennas that transmit and receive a signal to and from a phone. Okay, a phone is very much like a car radio. As I drove here today, I tune into my favorite radio station or my favorite frequency, and uh, somewhere Jesus as along my Christ. route, there's a radio tower. It emits a signal at that frequency. My car radio can receive that signal. Shit. I can listen to my favorite station. The major difference between a car radio and a cell phone is that with a cell phone, that and that information has to go in two directions. It has to be able to be received from the tower, but you also need to be able to send that information back to the tower. So those are the antennas that send and receive those signals. The second thing about this is you'll know that those, you realize those antennas, they hang on a triangular shaped structure. Most of the towers are designed to cover a full circle or 360 wow. degrees. And the way that the carriers are... Hey, welcome in, everybody. We just had a big spike in people that joined us. So I just want to let you know uh, what we're doing today, and I thought would be a really great uh, piece of information and something to review that could be very, 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 very important in Karen Reed's case. I got this idea from... I've had it in the back of my mind, but it rekindled it last night when I was over on Turtle Boy's channel and watching the Microdots videos. Um, and they talked about geofencing in the videos. So I said, you know, let's get this stream and let's do it. I want Tom to come on here, obviously, because he's a computer expert and you can speak to this stuff, which I thought was great. And, I, and of course, I just love doing Sunday nights with Tom. So hopefully we can make this a regular because I really love being with Tom on Sunday. Um, but I, I thought this would be a very valuable stream for people that don't understand this stuff. So it will break down how your phone collects data, how they extract data, how cell phone towers work, how this essentially pins people down into that area of where that crime potentially took place. And uh, what we're watching is a segment from Alec Murdoff's trial. We all know about what happened with him. And this is a special agent that is very, very um, uh, skilled in cast information. So welcome in. Thanks for joining us. And we'll continue to play through here. Accomplish this is by breaking that circle into three sides or three sectors. Um, so later on in my report, you're going to see these wedge shapes. And I like to just think of the center of that wedge shape as nothing more than the center of one side of this triangle. Uh, going on in a lot of other places, um, urban, more suburban areas, there's not really room to build like these big towers like this one on the top left. So they start putting them on the sides of buildings. Um, the smaller ones will be on top of light poles in the cities. Um, so just because they're not, just because you don't see it or you don't realize that it's there, it's still there. Um, another example of that, of course, is the my favorite, the pine tree. Um, these are all over the place, and they usually sit about 150 feet taller than all the other trees around them. Um, but at the top, them? there's these spray-painted antennas. What's that, Tom? Have you seen the fake trees? That yeah. Are cell phone towers? yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They're they're, incredible. They're, and what he's saying is you don't need a tower. Towers are everywhere now on any building, on the side of buildings, on top of uh, street lights now. So towers are everywhere. That's yeah. why the guy drives around. Right. Yep. Good point. Good point. They provide the same service as a regular tower such as this. Yep. All right. So 
Again, the tower is separated into three, most towers are separated into three sides or three sectors. Uh, when I look at the call detail records, they tell me the tower number, say it's 23. They tell me the sector, say it's one. What I have to do is I have to go into the tower list and I have to look up tower number 23, and then I have to look up sector one. And that tower list is gonna tell me which way that sector faces. What I'm looking for there is something called the azimuth or the orientation. Azimuth and orientation are just two big scary words for direction. Okay, so if the azimuth is zero, all that means is that side of the tower faces north. Okay, if the azimuth is 180, it, all that means is the tower faces south. Hey, for anybody that's watching on Twitter, if you want to come over in the live chat, you can. Just look up on YouTube, Let's Talk Live. Uh, yeah, let's talk live. LTL True Crime. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to my old, old, old name. LTL True Crime. You can join the live chat. We get about 700 people in the chat. Come hang out. You know, we'd love to hear what you have to say. If you want to bounce over here, uh, if you have the capability to get on YouTube, just look up LTL True Crime. You can just click on the live. Come join the live chat. If not, we welcome you on Twitter. All right, let's keep rolling through. Go hit ahead. That like, hit that like button. Yeah, smash the like it. button. Everybody, please, 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 yeah. please. All right, let's go. This is very, very important. Um, so what I have to do is I will draw a line at zero if it faces north, and then I'll go 60 degrees in one direction, 60 degrees in the other direction. That gives me one third of that tower, one third of that circle, which is the sector in which the uh, energy is being emitted. I'm going on next. So I display that information using this wedge shape. So you can see this is a 120 degree wedge. Um, there's just shaded area in the middle. Okay, just because that shaded area is there doesn't mean the phone has to be within that shaded area. Radio frequency is like, it's like light. It's like if I shut all the lights off in this room and I shine a flashlight to the back of the room, it's just gonna be emitted in that direction. That's all I'm saying by showing the shaded area that the energy from that tower is being emitted in that direction. Good. And then this is how I map the... Um, this is how I map the sectors on the map. I use that wedge. Um, each one of these green dots on this map happens to be a cell tower. And so generally the phone's gonna be somewhere within this wedge, within the arms of this wedge, but somewhere between the tower that's being used and the next one in that direction, but closer to the one that's being used. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, another set of uh, records that we can get, um, something called RTT or timing advance. Um, this is a Verizon case, so the records we have are called RTT records. The tower what RTT records crazy. are is it's an estimation <laughs> I've seen videos of, people of the climbing. distance between the phone and the tower at the time that that transaction occurred. All right, so what we get is a regular wedge, like we know which tower, we know which side of the tower is being used, and then Verizon tells us approximately how far the phone is from that tower at the time that it's used, okay? This is based on like a basic time over distance theory. Uh, we know how fast the signals travel. They travel at the speed of light. Um, and then all we have to do is time them from the, the time it takes to go from the tower to the phone and back to the tower. And then we can estimate the distance. Um, so the phone, when these types of things occur, we have these records. What we're gonna have is this hot dog or this wedge, this uh, shaded wedge here, or the shaded um, band here. And that phone's gonna be somewhere inside that band or just slightly inward from the band. And would another, <clears throat> could you use another word for that shade of band? Could you call it an arc? An arc, arc, yes, yes, sir. All right, so now this slide, um, this is going into the actual case here. So uh, this is showing the, the legend. So this is where all the locations in this case are located. Uh, starting with the top left one, um, the top one, the red pin here in the center of the page, uh, that's the address of the crime scene on uh, Moselle Road in Island. Next is um, the green pin, which is uh, Almeida. And then uh, next is the orange pin. That's 1104 Luray Highway in Hampton, South Carolina. The purple pin is uh, 123 Russell Road in Brunson, South Carolina. And, and I'm gonna yes. stop you there, yes, and let's uh, uh, let's go on to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one of the things I'm gonna ask you to do, Agent Wild, as you go through some of these, the, the colors kind of bleed sometimes on these monitors. 
Uh, so some the jury may not be able to read some of the place names from where they're at. So each time we go to a different map, if you just kind of provide a general orientation of, of where you know the cities are and some of the roads are, okay. just just so the jury can can stay with us, please. Okay, that works. All right. So this map, um, I can't read the time frame on that on the bottom. Um, Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, see, so that's cut off on the very bottom there. Yeah. And, uh, but it's, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Can well, I, we can, can go through the exhibit. Okay. Uh, what, the one I just. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep up. Okay. That's fine. See. Okay, so this is thank you so much. All right, so what's the time frame? On so the slide? time frame for this one is uh June 7th, uh 4 53 p.m. to 6 09 p.m. And this is uh I just want to answer this. Uh it's a great question. Moxie says, uh, can they I think she meant can they tell a period of time that a phone is not moving, uh, but the watch is likely like likely nothing is moving for a bit, but the watch starts moving, huh? I would think so, yeah, because if that watch is connected to that phone, she's probably talking about an Apple watch is what I'm guessing. Yeah, I would. I mean, maybe Olivia knows a little bit better. A anything that anything that anything that's connected to that phone electronic pretty much nowadays is trackable. Yeah. And <clears throat> take a look. If you guys want Google up what a stingray is and you're going to be freaked out. Look up what a stingray is. Massachusetts State Police run them. They they actually have oh, them. Yeah, yeah, they they act as a cell tower, but they're stronger than a cell tower because they go they cast out to the phones mm -hmm. and, and they ask specifically, "Gimme, give gimme, give gimme," give and they do. Right. And so Olivia did confirm. She said yes, yes. Uh, Scott with the five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. it. Says, remember, Auntie Bev blocked the evidentiary hearing, which would be brought forth in Carrie's defense team. Cell phone expert to testify months ago. Boom. Yep, you're absolutely you're 100 right, Scott. Yep. I mean, if this if you're just jumping in and 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 you know, if you don't smell corruption here, I mean, come on, what the fuck? I don't need. I don't know how much more I need to explain it. I don't need how much Tom needs to explain it. I don't need how much more. Uh, the glare needs to explain it. I don't know how much more Turtle Boy has been screaming about it for months. I mean, yeah. if you don't smell it and see it here, come on. All right, let's keep going. The here. activity for Paul Murdoch's phone ending in seven eight four five. Uh, so the blue uh, the blue pin is the address in Okatee, South Carolina. Okay. And what times do you show Paul's phone? Uh, at, in that general area near Okatee, South Carolina. So uh, between 5:40 and uh, 6:03, generally in in that area. On it's the afternoon of, of what day? On the afternoon of June 7th. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there's several hits off several towers. I yeah. Think. There's some down here. There's some at the bottom. So uh, 4:53, 5:11. Uh, it's using the tower just south of there. And then 5219 through 609, the phone is using the tower north of it. And, and just so the jury understands, you know, this is that sector you're talking about. Yes, ago, right? So when the tower pinged off this at this in this in this sector at this time, in theory, that phone could be anywhere within this sector, correct? That's correct. That phone could be anywhere within that sector. It could also be slightly outside of that sector because those lines, I can't go out to this tower. And look up and they see already are, coming off. They already are. Already the fuzzy, <laughs> They're the already all over it. <laughs> so the sectors <laughs> aren't hard and fast at every time. Correct. Okay. Remember, uh, the genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Okay, it cannot go back in the bottle. You, you got to put you. You have to. We got to figure something out where they said that in good conscience we cannot allow this case to go forward. Yeah, you, it's got to. You have to sum that up because that is that's priceless. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Boom. That's it. Well, how about this one? It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. 
<laughs> Come on, people, wake up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just as in your general experience. Yes. Within what range would you usually see? A and Elizabeth you know, Little. Uh, Don't leave her range? out. I She's amazing. Well, it can vary because it depends on where the phone is. Um, you know, in a rural area, uh, the phone could be six to eight, ten miles from the from the tower. And it can Thank you, Ruth. That tower. It just kind of depends on where it is. Because towers are usually pretty far apart. Rural in rural areas, I mean, they're set up for population density. So in rural areas, not a lot of population, a lot of farmland. Uh, they're going to be further apart. Whereas if you get um, closer into the city, in the city or suburban areas, they're going to be closer and closer together. And, and as Mike says he's going back to a soup can with a string. As long as there's not a third person that ties on it, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> Still screwed there, guy. <laughs> Just talk to somebody. <laughs> you can talk to them. It's okay. <laughs> uh, vehicle GPS location, same thing. Absolutely. <laughs> that knows where it is. Does it mm. automatically all by itself? Just as a general rule, do, do cell phones try to connect to the nearest tower? Or do, do they have the best signal, correct? Well, the cell phone tries to connect to the tower and sector it sees as the best signal. That's not always the nearest tower, but most of the time it is. Oh, Motion, I'm going to answer that question for you right now. Just about 99.9999999% of the people that are watching the stream tonight are pro Karen Reed. I can tell you because you know why? Karen Reed is an innocent woman. Karen Reed should not be in the position that she's in. We know who did it. And the FBI knows who did this. And that's why on the 15th, the Commonwealth is going to have their hands full. Their hands full. Eight letters. Eight. Eight letters. The feds know what happened in that house. And it will come out. They framed an innocent woman because they beat a guy to death and dragged him out on the front lawn and tried using her as a scapegoat. Bottom line, that's it. Bottom line, that's it. And Karen Reed will walk free out of court and be free from this nightmare because I'm getting tired of it dragging on. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch yep. of bullshit. <clears throat> and so Paul's phone is in the area of Okatee starting uh, 5.30 p.m. to about 6.09 p.m. On the, on the afternoon of June 7th. That's correct. You got a lot just, to catch just up on there, friend. Sure, we say Paul's phone. Uh, you can't testify as to who was holding that phone, correct? That's correct. I have no idea whose hand that phone was in during each one of these calls. Um, all we know is that was the phone that, that we believe he was using. But Paul's phone is, is in these areas during these times. It is. Okay, <clears throat> okay we'll continue with uh, Paul. Right. So this this next slide is 6.17 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. And basically at 6.17, the phone is way south down here on the bottom of the page. And, and let's, let's, let's do some general orientation here. All right. What's this town right here? Can you read that? Oh, uh, Yemisee. Okay. Yep. And this is, this is where? That's Barnville. Okay. And that green was again what? Almeda. Okay. Yep. And red, and this red up here is? That's the Moselle. Okay. All right, so what, what do you see this phone do, do it during this time frame starting at 624? Uh, yeah, so between 617 and um, 653, it's traveling north um, from the bottom of the page up to the side and then to kind of to the top. And then finally, um, where it uses sector one here at 705 and 730, it's consistent. Do you want me to pause? They know how fast he was going, by the yeah. way, from, from tower to tower. They can measure that. Just Yep. When I'm throwing that out Just there. a little thing in there. We'll throw that in there. <laughs> They're going to know everything. <laughs> yeah. And we're being in the area of Moselle. Okay. Uh, and this is just a pinging in this area at 624, correct? Yeah. These are just the phone calls. These are the phone calls that are coming out on the phone. Those are the towers that the phone is selecting as the best tower. I, I always like when they cut to Murdoff, he's probably like, you motherfucker. <laughs> you're not happy. <laughs> he should know this. He was a fucking lawyer. He was a fucking lawyer, Tom. He should know uh, this shit that was gonna uh, bag him. We've seen some people online just because you're a lawyer don't mean yeah, you're smart. We've seen some people who aren't lawyers who are brilliant, like Olivia. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, Olivia, <laughs> sit down to the bar and pass it and say, give me something else. <laughs> Crazy. You so should, yeah. You fucking know this. He's a fucking lawyer. <laughs> This general direction seems to be traveling up north. Nokati would be somewhere down in this area off the map, correct? Yes, sir. And, uh, and that's off to the, for the record, off to the right and below <coughs> where this slide is. And then you see it, the general progression north towards the Mesa, Yes. Uh, and we see sector three here. And what time is it being in sector three, just due south of Moselle? It's at uh, 6.53 p.m. Okay. And then we see it switch over to sector Arthur, one. Yeah. Which is a north facing sector, correct? Yes, sir. And what time is it in sector one? 7.05. Okay. And then at 7.30, it uses that same sector one. See what's going on here now? It's pinging all those towers. And this is how they geolocate someone and they put someone in a specific area. That's what's going on with this testimony right now. Um, at a distance of 2.91 miles, which is in so the area of Moselle. So it's it, 7.30, it's somewhere in this arc like we talked about before. Correct? Yes, yes. Uh, the arc, the, the, the number provided by Verizon is not necessarily 100% accurate, right? It's not, because um, depending on where the phone is, if the phone's out in the middle of the field, one mile from the tower, it should register at a mile. But if the phone's in a house, or let's say the phone's in this courtroom, uh, those signals have to go through the exterior walls of the courtroom, hit my phone, then go back out through the exterior walls, and it might slow the signal down which will make the distance just slightly further. So it's, it's generally reliable, but not necessarily exactly accurate. When you see that RTT distance, it's correct? Not, it's not exactly accurate. Okay. Correct. All right. But uh, regardless, at 6.53, it's being to the south of Moselle in Sector 3. And at 7.05, it's being in the sec same sector where Moselle is to the north. Correct? Yes. And so what, what does that... what? Inference, can you draw on your opinion? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, Olivia. Let me just pull the back. She's Brian. They can also geolocate someone using the phone's uh, native location data, not just a cell triangulation. You're right. And that's what we saw in that cell bright extraction. They extracted it and they got all the data just knowing where people were in that area. It's unbelievable. So, so ahead, that, that means, just for everyone else, that means <coughs> that if you're not in range, the phone still records it. Mm -hmm. So they can go and grab that location data from the phone, even though it wasn't, quote, connected to the Internet or, or a phone service provider. The phone still knows where it is, according to the cell towers. All mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Yep. Good point, Tom. <clears throat> cell phone did between those two times. Well, between 653 and 705? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it could have moved from sector three to sector one, or it could have been uh, on the line between sector three and sector one at that time and just bounced back and forth. But you would agree that generally this direction is, is towards where? Towards Moselle. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. And we're on the next slide. And tell us what we see. This is still Paul Murdoch's phone. Correct? It is. This is 7.30 p.m. to 8.40 p.m. Okay. Um, so here on the right side of the page, starting at 7.30, um, there's those activate RTT hits at, uh, and that was the same from the last, that's the same from the last one. So, okay. Right. And then, um, 733, there's another RTT hit, um, and a call, oh, I'm sorry, another RTT hit on this tower to the bottom. <coughs> left. Um, and then where those arcs overlap when they're in close timing to each other, that's generally where the phone is going. To yeah. Be. Real quick. I'll just do another review. Uh, Alex is asking, you know, hey, just uh, hopping in. What are we watching? So we're watching tonight a segment from the Alec Murdoch trial. This is special agent Matthew Weil, and he's talking about cell phone uh, locations, data location, geofencing. And it's very important, especially in the Karen Reed case, to put everybody in a specific area at a specific time doing specific things, uh, all by this little fun device that we carry around every day. Um, and we know how important. Uh, the phone or someone's particular phone in this case uh, was to this case. Um, and uh, also, we'll also say, you know, John's movements, Karen's move, everybody that had a phone in and around that area that night will be able to track all of their movements and what happened with those phones. Um, and I'm already going to tell you, FBI already knows. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. They're investigating the investigation. They already know. 
Um, and this is this is essentially how they they come to the termination. So um, very great uh, testimony, very watered down so people can understand it. I'm following it brilliantly. I get it. And uh, I thought it'd be very relevant in this case. All right, let's keep playing here. Okay. So <clears> you can <throat> see that the arcs overlap in the area of Moselle. So by about that time, 7.30 to 7.33, uh, would your opinion be that cell phones in that area? It, it has to be. It has to be somewhere in the area, Ms. Elf. Yes, sir. Um, and then we have other calls at 840, 832 and 840 on here. Okay. 840 and it pings off of this sector at 840? Yes, sir. Correct. And that's sector which off this tower? That's uh, sector one off of that tower. Right. And again, same direction as, as Ms. Elf. Yes. Okay, and what do we see on this slide? This is um, 9 03 p.m. on June 7th. Um, and so here there's an there's a call and then there's an RTT uh, distance of 3.11 miles. Okay, and let's just do some general orientation again. Um, the red is what? This red marker is what? That's Moselle. Okay, and the green is what? It's, um, it's Almeida. Okay. Tom, here we go. We had a question. Timothy says, can they use that data to find out who was with the Ford Edge at 3.30 a.m.? 100%. Yeah. Yep. They were carrying a phone. I bet they can actually find out which Ford Edge it was. <coughs> Ford Edge also chit chats as to where it is. So they can tell you what Ford Edge it was as well as who was in it for the entire length of time. And then you need to prove ownership at that point. But yeah. listen, real quick, can I do something for the people here? Yeah, 100%. All right, everybody, right? Launch Google Maps mm -hmm. in your phone, right? Google Maps. It'll open up. Give you a second here. All right, when that opens up, okay, tap on your profile picture in the top right corner. Tap on your timeline. And then tap today. And it'll tell you everywhere you went so everywhere far. Everywhere you went. And... Yep. You don't need to be on the internet. So your phone does it all by itself. Yeah. And that's why um, if you've ever, I remember like when Facebook was first starting and experimenting with geofencing, I used to get maybe 10 years ago, they started really pumping it and you drive somewhere and you'd see a notification come up on your phone. Like, Oh, you're like two miles from Dunkin Donuts or you're, you know, whatever it's, it's, it's finding all the places you like to be. Yep. And, um, you know, that was why they started that whole checking in thing. If you remember Facebook, they started that feature on there checking in. Remember that? And you always just say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tom is checked in at Dunkin Donuts and Braintree. It'll tell you, Hey, it's yep. learning the algorithm. So it can say, okay, we know Tommy's movements. We know where Tom's going to go. Yep. And then that's how they get the advertising and get all that that advertising to you. Because if I know where Tom's going and what area Tom's going to be in, then when he opens up Google, bam, there's going to be a Wendy's ad or maybe uh, he needs some new tires or whatever the fuck it is. That's something. You know? But yep. and again, it, my <clears throat> phone will talk to your phone and your phone talks to my phone. So if I'm going to start looking up um, storm doors, and I see you in front of the courthouse, your phone now is going to start showing you storm door windows. Right. Door, this, yep. that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I've even heard weird things with the algorithm that they will look at uh, what books you read, maybe the time you take a dump, and, um, uh, you know, uh, if you ate a, steak, ate a steak last week, they'll take that and crunch it all together, and you'll start getting ads for Taco Bell. For Listen, some weird reason, they figure all this stuff out. It's they weird. They know when you wake up because you wake up and you grab your phone. <coughs> and you go in and you take a take a piss in the morning and you got your phone. And they know the phone's travels. What? What? There's a distance from your yeah, bed to the right. toilet, right? What is it? Seven feet? So every time you wake up, phone moves seven feet. It knows your bathroom seven feet away because you're a human. And that's what you do when you first wake up. You go seven feet away. It knows that mm -hmm. you don't have to tell it. It it's there. Yeah, so they have all this stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, good stuff. All right, here we go. And then what's this town right here? That's uh, Barnville. Okay. 
All right, and if we have a hit at 903.22. Yep. All right, and we're and it's off sector what? It's off sector three, um, but again, there's uh, there could be a little overlap there between sector three and sector one. Okay. And so there's a chance. I mean, the phone's likely still in the area of Moselle. It's just using a different sector. Okay, your opinion is it's likely in the area of Moselle. Yes. There is. I know for a fact that there's. Um, there's signal from this sector in the and area. We have you have slides show that. I should, yes. Okay. Okay. And then here we have at uh, 10:34 p.m. Uh, another hit. Yes, and sir. again, this is the same map as last time, correct? It is. 10:34 um, p.m. It's using the same. It's the same map. I'll look into that. Change back to the Thank you. One. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And in your opinion, that phone is still pinging in? It's consistent with being in the area of Moselle. Okay. And, and now we're, we're transitioning something Sorry, else. buddy. Go ahead. Someone said they work in logistics in Afghanistan. The spider listed as classified, sensitive item, no transport over the road, air transport only, because if it gets in a crash, it'll get destroyed. So mm -hmm. I'm looking it up. You know what that thing will do? It'll. <laughs> Upgrade or downgrade firmware on multiple devices. Download or write an application to multiple devices. Jesus. So you can actually, like, modify an app. So that, like, if you're sending a message to me, I can add in BCC, blind courtesy copy, third person. So whatever we're going back and forth, all goes to whomever. Wow. Yeah. There's, a, there's another thing that they use. Um like just talking about like spyware and stuff too. And, and it's so intricate and I can't think of the name of it. I've heard it before. It's like, it's not like worm or anything like that. It's just some kind of like random name, like pig or something or swine. I forget what it's called, but it's so encrypted in your phone and, the, and it's used by like these huge top government agents and they literally can just mirror your phone and you don't even know that the, the software is in there. It's so no. crazy. It that stuff was actually written into the chip. It's actually that yeah. that those instructions that you're talking about on all the new phones, the government has a contract with Verizon and all the big carriers to allow them to do this. But that information is burned in, into the chip so that it comes oh. standard on every phone. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah it's nuts. I, I heard about that that fir that that it's not firmware, but it's it's that software that yeah. And they said it, Joe Rogan actually Joe Rogan talked about it on one of his shows, and he said that they actually can do it by getting it in your phone. Like, say, all right, I call you Tom really quick. Yep. And you pick up for two seconds, and I hang up like a false call. The yep. software is already in your phone now. Just and you to, wouldn't even know it. No, because or you can. It's the communic again yeah. that communication where the software is traveling through a port that says, "Hey." where's this phone is it within range for me to make a phone call it does a, like a check can yep. i make this phone call that's where the software goes right when it does that first check and they even can do it through like uh like a spam text or a spam email and the minute you open it it's in your Wait. phone and you wouldn't even know it's there it's so oh. undetectable well, and it literally not. can get they can get in that's it pegasus thank you that's it pegasus okay. Bingo. That's the name of it. And it can literally get in there. They can get all your data. They can manipulate things in your phone. Like, it's crazy what they can do with it. Yeah. Right, real quick, that. bleach bit. When when you write data to a hard drive, it's there. It's always there until it gets overwritten. So what happens is it's one. It's either a one or a zero. That's all it is. It's just ones and zeros. It's all on the hard drive. So if you have... Um, information on the hard drive you want it gone you write <clears throat> in zeros on the drive so that it overwrites what's on it mm -hmm. problem with, with some of these softwares is if it's a zero it turns it to a one if it's a one it turns it to a zero so you write another program that goes back and turns every zero into a one and now you can recover data that's how you recover data now when when they write in the, the ones and zeros all together you don't even know. You have no idea what's going on in it because it's all instructions. Boom, 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 boom. And your phone just does, yep, line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. And Pegasus, you know, it, it just needs, your phone needs to talk to a that's it. power. That, yeah. That's 
If you're on, they got you. They put it in an airplane. They can fly around above you. And again, they track you. Not not to a six-foot square. <laughs> Six-inch square. They, Six they're, inch putting, square. they're putting freaking tomahawks with, 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 with just razors on them. They're not even no explosive. Just razors through a window. That's Taking crazy. a dude out. Yeah, it's crazy. That's accurate, guy. It's pretty accurate to fly something within a 3D s- space and time to get it. You, you yeah. know, it's that's big. That's big. It's why it's wild. It's wild stuff. Yeah, it gets deep. The cell phone stuff is deep. All right, let's play. Correct. Yes, sir. This good stream. By the way, the, um, this is stream. the iPhone location data that was taken from his uh, from the download of his iPhone. Okay, and we have some some. Uh, Times here. Thank you, Kerry. And it is a good, yeah, it's a good show. Uh, with, sure. Good idea. Has, uh, informa- more information that shows a uh, overhead map of the area. Real yes. quick, I'm just going to read this. Scott, thanks for the five. He says, We have got to get Gem, uh, JM cell phone uh, file from the carry yet. We have got the communication between BA and Jen yet. I don't know if they have that file yet. They asked for it and they <coughs> think they were going to get it. Yeah. Uh, and let's let's talk about this. You've been out Thank this you. property, correct? Yes, I have. And this is where? What What is this called? That's uh, Moselle. And what, what am I, I love having Tommy here, here too. Bottom, middle of we always have fun. That's the main house. Okay. And in this this area up here, in the uh, basically due north of the residence, what is this area? That's the dog kennel or the hang or the hangar. Right, See, a- that's the thing here. I'm going to be honest, you know, and I know we've we've stopped a lot because we're talking a lot, but I just want people to understand, like when I. When I do cases, my material is going to be very analytic and I like to deep dive into shit and just say, okay, how can we figure this out? Or what are the methods that they're going to use to figure this case out? That's how I attack these cases. I'm very, you know, numbers, letters, uh, photos, video. I'm going to break down that shit. And this is why I like doing shit like this because it just fascinates me. It's, it's just crazy. And this is the angle that I can, you know, this is my material, you know, I, this is how I do my stuff. It's very analytical. I like analytics. I like looking at numbers and, and stuff like that. So, and I just like to figure out how things work. You know, I've always like taken stuff apart when I was a kid, I would take electronics apart and look at it and say, all right, how does this work? How can I fix it? How can I break it? How can I make it better? <laughs> So that's the kind of stuff that you're going to get here with me, you know. Speaking about making real, making things better real quick, um, I went for a patent. Everyone here know what a patent is? Mm-hmm. I took a computer mouse and I punched holes inside of it, on inside the cover here, and I put a fan, small little fan inside the mouse in the mm-hmm. bottom, and it blew air outside the top of the mouse here. So it, oh, kept, nice. so it kept your hand cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. So yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. big hangar building. Yes, and there's a, a smaller series of dog kennels right next to the hangar. Building. Yes. All right, and we have some location data uh, from Paul's phone uh, here. Correct. Yes, we do. So between 7:45 and 7:56, uh, all these circles in and around the road and close to the kennels, uh, that's where the phone is being used. And then at eight o'clock. There's two hits uh, down uh, south of there um, at 37 and 100 meters. And, and, and we see these red circles. What What is that red circle and what does it represent? So the red circle is the um, <laughs> it's uh, it's the area that the phone could potentially be within. The, the phone shouldn't be any further than – the phone should be where the pin is, but it shouldn't be any further than the exterior of that circle. So sometimes the GPS information provided by a phone isn't exactly – 100% accurate, correct? Correct. But it does, the phone information provides information that allows you to right back, Tommy. Uh, determine yeah. how accurate the location information yeah, it's is. It's a correct. level, it's basically a level of accuracy. So if the level of accuracy is like three, four meters, I mean, the phone's going to be within this general area around me. Um, mm-hmm. But if the level of accuracy is, let's say, 5,000 meters, uh, that just tells me it's here in town somewhere. All right, and, and we see some of those distances listed in your data here, correct? Yes, sir. So at the 745.31 hit, we see, and what is this number? Um, that's the latitude and longitude. So that's like the specific point that the phone returned is where it was located. And then I see a number next to that. What is that? That's the uh, radius, so the red circle in meters. And 
talking about this again, data point, what does that number say? Uh, 48. 48. Yeah, 48 meters. Okay. So uh, from the information side, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so from if I understand what you're telling us is at 745, 31 p.m., the phone is at this, this lap within about 48 meters of this lap. Yes. Right? Sir. It's, and then, uh, you know, we see some different uh, uncertainty area. So at 7.46.09 p.m., there's about 165 meter circle. So that's that's just much bigger circle. Yes, sir, right? it is. Yep. Right. And then well, we see 52 meters at 7.56.06 p.m., correct? Yes, sir. All right. And then we, we talk about these hits uh, and down here at 8 o'clock. Yes. And we're going to advance one more slide to show the uh, <laughs> visual map. The previous slide had the exact same data, correct? Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> so we're still looking at a overhead map, uh, aerial view of Moselle, correct? Yes. And this right. is uh, 8.04 to 8.05 p.m. Okay. And so now we're seeing some, some hits across this Moselle Road, correct? That's correct. Uh, and uh, again, we see the, the location error value, and it's somewhere within these circles. It is. At those times. Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, now we're at 8.06.20 p.m. Thank you, correct? Scott. Yes, sir. Appreciate at it. At 8.06.20, where do we see the, the, the phone? So at 8.06.20, it's uh, here on uh, near Moselle Road, uh, just north of the driveway. Okay. And uh, from there, it moves towards the dog kennel or the hangar. It moves towards the dog kennel. Now listen, this is feet. And he's going to get it down to inches. I think it was like, I think he gets it down to like six inches from where he is at this dog kennel. So this is very important. This is what I want people. This is the part that I really want people to narrow in on. This is going to nail him to that specific spot. Let's back up just a little, little bit. Here we go. Location error value. And it's somewhere within these circles. It is. At those times. Right? Yes. Okay, um, now we're at 8.06.20 p.m., correct? Yes, sir. And at 8.06.20, where do we see the, the, the phone? So at 8.06.20, it's uh, here on uh, near Moselle Road, uh, just north of the driveway. Okay. And uh, from there, it moves towards the dog kennel or the hangar. It moves towards the dog uh, kennel or the hangar, then kind of up the driveway, and then finally winding up back at the house uh, at about uh, 814. So we see a series of, of location hits, correct? Yes, sir. And of course, looking at the timing, it would appear that the phone moves back to, uh, through the kennels, correct? Yes. And then moves up this road towards the house at the main residence, correct? Yes. And we see uh, some circles associated with this data, but the, several of these circles start to get pretty small, correct? Yes, they are pretty small. Uh, and what, what Want to answer that, Tommy? Yeah, I'm. I just I'm typing it in right now. Oh, you can answer. Yeah. All right. So there, boom. Um, he can't. Oh, and that. Oh, that right. Um. Uh. You know, it's funny. I I heard about that, and I the problem I have with that. Okay. Honestly, why would you put the phones somewhere where you can physically go retrieve them? Um, yeah. Damaged or not, what, why would you put them in, in a known spot? And then you put it 40 feet down. It's still 40 feet <clears> down. You still go get that phone. If it was put there, you can go get it. So, you know, what do you do with it? You know, I mean, the only way to get rid of a phone, and I'm not going to tell you guys, but there's literally only one way to get rid of a phone. I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that to the experts. <laughs> what are those size of those circles? Uh, Twenty meters are the final ones that are uh, in and around the house. And, and just so I clarify, we see the blue pin, right? Yes. And that represents the actual lap long that was recorded by the phone. Yes, it does. Uh, and the, the air, the twenty meters, means it's almost certainly within that circle. Yes. Within that particular pin, correct? Yes. Uh, and when you see a series of kind of rapid pings like this uh, within a short period of time, 
Uh, generally, what, what does that tell you is going on with that cell phone at that time? Well, the phone's using some kind of application, some kind of map or something that's using its location. Data. All right. All right. And then regardless, by 8.08, 45 p.m., where is Paul's phone? It's, uh, it, it's back at the house. Okay. And that's got a low uh, error of how, long, how big? I'm sorry. An accuracy of 20 meters. An accuracy of 20 meters. Okay. And that makes a pretty small circle around the size of the house. It does. Right. And there's another hit at 8.14 p.m. at the same place? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we're moved on. We're still looking at this uh, overhead uh, map of uh, Moselle, and we have some more hits starting at 8.14 and going through to 8.35, 07 p.m., correct? That's correct. And all these seem to be centered around the, the residents. They are, yes. Now, there's some varying degrees of accuracy, correct? Yeah, there's uh, one that goes up to 165, 165 meters, but most of them are uh, 20, between 20 and 79. 8.35, 07 p.m., uh, that phone, Paul's phone, is within 20 meters <laughs> of the Moselle residence, correct? That's correct. <laughs> Here, how they're just pinning everybody down, 20 meters, 6 meters. I mean, they're just... It's incredible. Incredible. Right. All right, and we're going to skip one more slide just to keep with the uh, digital map. Yep. Uh, and just, just so it's clear to the jury, um, this slide contains the exact same information, correct? Yes, it does. And then I just uh, switched the map over from the regular street map to, digital, to the uh, Google Earth map. Okay. All right, so now we see another series of phone uh, location uh, for Paul's phone. And this is, again, the night of June 7, 2021, correct? Yes. All right, 83807, uh, where do we see that phone uh, uh, start pinging? Again, there's a 56 meter, um, there's a 56 meter hit at um, right around the dog kennels. Okay. So by 8.30, p.m., that phone's within uh, 56 meters of the dog kennels, correct? That's correct. And then we see some more hits. There's a little bit larger of an error at, uh, starting at 8.44. Yes. But then we see a hit at 8.44.55 p.m. And it says media location. What, yeah. what does that mean, sir? So um, in the Cellbrite report itself for that. Cellbrite. That, um, Cellbrite. For that record, it came from a movie file. Um, that's where that location was generated. From. Snapchat. And if you reviewed or seen that video that the. That location data came from? Yes, I have. And just generally speaking, what is that video? Like? That's the video inside the kennel when uh, Paul's uh, playing with the doll. Okay. That's the Snapchat okay. video. And that video was recorded. And the timestamp recorded on the video is 844.55, correct? Yes. And that matches exactly with the doll. Correct? It does. And I don't see a number next to that, um, that data point. Why don't I see a, a accuracy number? Um, not 100% sure why there's no accuracy number, but we know the video was taken inside the dog kennel because we can see the video. Um, and then the next one right after that, I mean, basically there's records just before at 844 and 53 seconds and 844 and 56 seconds, and both of those put it in the, in the area of the dog kennel. I'm gonna skip one more slide here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're still looking at this overhead map of Moselle, correct? Yes, sir. And we have, looks like a hit, Location data at 10.18 yes. p.m. and at 10.18.03 p.m., correct? Yes. And both those are centered on, on where? They're, again, uh, just right there in the vicinity of the Dolph Kennel. Okay. Now, uh, did you plot every single location data point that you received from Lieutenant Dove? No, I did not. Um, so, so I'm so glad someone said this. Walsh, they probably already have this information. And if you're talking about the Brian, the Brian Walsh case, yes. And why is in in Melanie Little made a great point about this. She said, why is it going to be able to be used in Brian Walsh's case? But Karen Reed, you can't. And she said, you can't have it both ways. It's got to be one way, one for all, all for one. You know, and that's what the Commonwealth's trying to do: erase this information and not give access to it because they know. I mean, here's a clear example. We're watching an expert that is literally nailing people down to meters, to feet, to inches. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts 
knows this. The FBI already knows, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm, I'm speculating, but I'm, I'm telling you. They already know. They already know. It's in the reports. Yeah, yeah Double M said it. Sword and the shield. You can't use it both ways. That's it's right. either one or the other. It's absolutely correct. You can't have it both ways. Yep. And Lally knows that that is accurate. So for him, <clears throat> the only thing that has been like refuted is is Lally saying, "Oh, he he, he just he, the, the the information that you know shows him going um up and down three flights of stairs is just it's just inaccurate. He never went in the house, and that is all that's been said about it in court that I've found. No, what there's no there's no data showing that what we have is wrong. He went in the house up and down three flights of stairs. That data." It, it the phone did that. Whether someone else did that with his phone, whether it was in his pocket or someone else's, that phone went up and down three flights of stairs. stairs. Back in yeah. the store. That's it. Yeah. And that mother effer Lally had notice of the eight letters at the end and tried to hide it at the end and went, Oh yeah, I have it. And then Bev's like, Well, I don't have it. Why don't I have it? He's flipping through his papers. And oh yeah, I got it. I got him right here. There's That's right no. here. Problem. I know where exactly. to talk about it. Yeah. He there didn't want go. to talk about it. Because he knows. He knows. Between 844 and 1018, there was a series of location data points, but most of them were between like four and six or seven thousand meters. Um, so they wouldn't in my in my opinion, they weren't super helpful to figuring out exactly where that zone was at that time. When you see an accuracy of that big or uh, uncertainty of that big. In your opinion, is that location something uh, that can be, is that reliable information? I mean, not 100% reliable because it is such a huge, uh, it's such a huge uh, area that it could be. I'm going to double time it here so we can pick up some time. Let's go up a little bit. Real quick, um, where was it? Uh, if there is data, are they able to admit it into evidence? Yes. It yes. has to be, it has to be though admitted. And the problem is they, the judge just cancel the rule 17 hearing yeah. and that's that if, if that's where that gets admitted in that trial and the judge canceled it like just now nah, we're not going to have it forget it so you can't admit that into evidence so you kind of doesn't matter we'll see what the feds say you can, you can back to the last couple slides Oop, that's a little minutes. too fast we'll go up to 125 now uh, between 8 44 p.m when it was 10, 18 p.m., did you see any information off of Paul's phone that suggests you went anywhere but stayed in those days? No. All right. Now we're going to move on uh, to Magnus' uh, phone, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to rewind back to earlier today, uh, and uh, let's look at this map first of all. Uh, what is this map generally of? This is like uh, the West Ashley area, so just south of Charleston. Okay. And we see some some tower hits in this uh, starting at yeah, about 4:25 p.m. and then ending at about 7:05 p.m. The phone's generally in this, uh, West Ashley area. So Maggie's phone remains in that general area until about 7:05 p.m. Yes. All right, and here. Um, okay, this is a bigger map, so let's get oriented. What is this this area right here? Yeah, so that's uh, North Charleston that you're circling there. In Charleston. And Charleston here. just to the south of that. Okay. Yep. And then uh, out here, what is that red uh, marker again? The red marker is Moselle. The green marker is Almeda. All right. And then we see a series of hits with Magnus phone. Uh, you've labeled them, what, one, two, three, four, and five? Yes, sir. And uh, these start at what time? They start at 7.07 and end at 7.50. Okay. And so generally speaking, what does this indicate Maggie's phone is doing to you? It's traveling time? from the Charleston area uh, west towards um, Moselle or Almeda. Okay. All right. and here, it's funny yeah, seeing people yeah, sped up a little bit because they're moving so fast. Yes, sir. <laughs> and where is this? Uh, that's uh, right in Walterboro, actually, right here. Right, right uh, here in Walterboro. Yes, right? sir. Uh, and uh, did you take a look at what appeared to be Maggie's general route from Charleston out towards Moselle during yeah. that time? Yes. Uh, and what road would she most likely have been on to travel that, that way? Uh, route 17. And so that route would have taken her right through the center of Walterboro? It would have, yes. I think, I think right out here, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and so she's somewhere in this sector at 7.50 p.m., uh, probably... Right in the middle of the right? Yes. All right. And just in your uh, analysis, did you just uh, looking for just looking for a rough number here? Did you calculate a rough drive time from here at the center of Walterboro out to Moselle? Yeah, it was uh, under 30 minutes. Okay. 
Roughly 30 minutes. Roughly 30 minutes. Okay. And this ping is at 750, 20? Yes. PM, correct? <laughs> Good now, one, Michelle. Are there any other? Uh, did you get any more tower information off of Maggie's phone for the rest of the evening? No, that 7:50 p.m. was the last tower hit. Uh, I received that was all. Oh, the thanks, Foxy. I appreciate it. And uh, there were some, Thank you. some phone calls uh, to Maggie after 7:50 p.m. Correct? Yes. Uh, but were any of those answered? No. Okay. And so you don't have any. Yeah. Data? Let's not forget everybody else, though. Let's not forget everybody else. The glare is doing his part. Broken banker. Um. You know, some of the other guys have fallen off a little bit. Unsafe spaces. I know Dave's been doing his stuff, and there's a lot of a lot of different stuff, though. Yeah, and uh, we're kind I of focused know. on Karen here. Yeah, it's just so, Karen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. no, I mean, is listen, that, are we crushing on her? Is that what this is called? <laughs> <laughs> crushing and, uh, on Karen, right? Oh, wait a minute. Listen, have you got your check from her yet? Because I haven't. I haven't received anything yet. No yeah, just, just saying, I, you know. <laughs> I, I and know. Uh, also, um, Melanie Little, too, coming into the movement. She, so. She's just amazing. That live was awesome the other night. You, you did a great job with that. We're and, gonna do her reach is huge. Like She's like um, Brandy Churchwell. Yeah. I mean, just awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, again, you know, we're all doing our parts. We're all doing our parts. We're all just trying to get out the word. And the yep. more people that know about this, the more, um, you know, the more powerful the movement becomes. I, so. I think I think if we weren't here, it would be more offensive to Aiden than to anybody because of what he started. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here and I wouldn't know any of you awesome people if it wasn't for Aiden. I mean, 100%. I get all, all these shows. I meet all these people. Not, not, they're not there to see me. They're there because Aiden. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's an incredible type of a thing. And to let that die, this movement die down, just because they snatched him from us. Oh, game on, game on. You put him in the penalty box. That's okay. You know, we can still skate backwards. We can play defense, and the defense will score. Watch. Here's the thing about. I never made any claim on my channel that I broke the story apart. I, I, Aiden, of course, Aiden, ultimately, right. yes, you are right. Time and look at I've been it. It's actual, probably right? about six months now, five or six months. And Aiden was about the eight month mark. So he was just ahead of everybody, the curve. Right. And then how I heard about it was when it initially happened, I kind of put it back in my data bank and I went, oh, that's kind of weird. And I think everybody kind of went, that's kind of weird. So we didn't hear about it. And then all of a sudden it started coming up again. I started reading more about it. We were hearing more about it. Core TV was doing tons of segments on it. So I went, okay, maybe this is a case that I can jump in on my channel and start doing something about it. And you can go back. I think I've done 50 or so streams, maybe, maybe a hundred now on it. And, uh, just talking about Karen and, and going down and, I, you know, looking into the case, we read, read through the PCA multiple times. I said, something doesn't seem right here. It seems weird. And then obviously, as you start deep diving into it, it connected me to Aiden. I went, holy shit, I know who Turtle Boy is. And uh, I've, you know, I wasn't a crazy follower of him, but I knew who he was. He was always out in the media doing things and exposing people, doing great work, great journalism. And, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to reach out to him and see if he wants to come on the show. And I reached out to him and he was gracious enough. He said, fuck yeah, I'll come on and talk about Karen Reed's case. Came on. We had a, a great hour and a half live. And, uh, you know, here we are. And now I have the opportunity to help out on his channel, which has been an amazing opportunity to give to have the helm hand it over and say, here, you know, run my channel and, 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 and do this work. And you know what? I haven't asked for one fucking thing. I don't want anything out of it. All I want when he gets out, I just want a handshake. That's it. Just a handshake. Right. You'll probably get a little more than that. But yeah, I just want a handshake. That's it. A, listen, you've been doing a good job. And like I said before, like that that torch, like here, y'all, it's your turn. That's it. It's not whether it's you want go right back to him. Yeah, but you know, it's just here you go. You're holding it. You're the one now. You you have to run with the torch. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I appreciate that, Bob. You know, I appreciate that. I never said that I broke this open. Glare never said he broke this open. Tom never said. We're just people that got in involved in the movement and understand how serious this is. And it goes back to this, like Tom and I said, uh, you know, at the beginning that this could be you. 
It could be your brother. It could be your sister. It could be your friend, a confidant, whoever that you could be in this position, you know, and, um, you know, you got to fight for people like this. And again, you know, we're pro law enforcement, but if there's something going on in that community and it's wrong and shit like this gets covered up, then shit needs to be investigated, needs to be looked into. And those corrupt people need to be brought forward. So, yep. uh, that's, that's my opinion. All right. Let's try to get through the rest of this bugger. Cause it's going wrong. <laughs> Tower information for <clears throat> that's right. Uh, now we've moved on and we're looking at uh, who's funding. We're looking at Alex funding. Okay. And what time frame are we talking about uh, here? This is uh, 4 10 p.m. to 6 25 p.m. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's get oriented here. This is the red marker is what? Uh, Moselle. And the green marker is what? Almeida. Okay. And then uh, the town of what's this town right here? Uh, Hampton. Okay. And Barnville is just south of it. Okay. And we see some hits off these two towers between 4 10 and 6 25 p.m., correct? Yes. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, location of the law firm, formerly known as uh, PMPED? Yes. Right. And is that in the vicinity of Hampton? It is. And would that be uh, within these uh, areas that Alex is home? Yeah, that would be consistent with the activity on phone records. Okay. And that's up until when? Uh, 6.25 p.m. All right. Uh, and here we are, uh, the next slide. And again, orientation, green is what? Uh, Almeida. Red is what? Moselle. And what information do we see here? Uh, here we have a number of calls between 6.40 and 9.10 p.m. And they're all using tower 159.263. And that's, that's, that's the one shown, uh, which faces north and is consistent with being in the area of uh, the Moselle property. So starting at 6.40 p.m., you see him north in this sector, which is the sector where Moselle is. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So here we are. Uh, well, let me go back. And these the rest of these phone calls painting in the same sector up until 9, 9, 10, 47. Right? Yes. All right. And now, what time frame are we talking about with this one? Now we're looking at 9, 12 to 9, 18. Okay. And in the 9, 12 uh, phone record, where does Alex's uh, cell phone ping? What sector? Uh, use the sector three on tower 159263, which is the one closest to Moselle. Right. So somewhere south or close to the border of this tower, correct? Yes. And then at 9, 18 p.m., we see. Uh, off of this tower, correct? Yes, yeah, off of uh, 159217, which is closer to Barnwell. And it would be in the north, most likely in the north side of that. Yes. <coughs> okay. All right. And now this is the same two calls, correct? Yes. All right. But now I see some, looks like some shaded <coughs> overlay over this. I'm going to give this back to you. Okay. What, what is that shaded overlay? What does it mean? So the, the shaded overlay is the coverage area uh, that we're able to uh, determine from doing that drive test <coughs> with our equipment. And so uh, basically we had to drive everything all around these uh, addresses and then go back and uh, and uh, look at the data. And then it creates these uh, these bubbles that show us where the coverage, where the equipment saw that tower in that sector. And so here you can see that at 918, I'm sorry, 912, uh, it's using the sector. It's kind of highlighted in green. Um, and then at 918. No, and that's the funny thing too, is I want to just kind of pop in really quick. And I know uh, a lot of these people say that, oh, you're all fucking grifters and this and that. Yeah. I've been calling, I've been following the case for four and a half months. I didn't jump on it right away. I think Aiden's been about eight months. I think maybe a bit, a little bit longer when I look back at all his material on us, I think about eight, about eight and nine months. I came into it about four and a half months ago. So I came into this before anything that has happened so far. I think people think like I just jumped into this like a week ago. It wasn't yeah. a week ago. I've been doing fucking streams on her case for four months. Time goes by fast too. Don't forget. So yeah. You know, you've been, it's probably been longer than that, Brian, to be honest it's about with you. Four, it's it was about five or six months. I think it's five. Yeah, it was close to five months. And, you know, time just boom, go. Just like that. I just looked at my lives. I looked at all my, my dates on my lives. It's around four and a half, five months. So, I mean, that's why I laugh. Like, they're all fucking grifters. You're just jumping on it. because I'm like, I've been doing this for five months. I've been talking about it. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't talked about the grifters or nothing like that. Yeah. Because, like, we're just, we're too busy. There's more important things. This is more important than talking about what ifs. And that's what I laugh about too. You can go on, like you can go on the donation sites. I kick back so much money. I've kicked back so much money. They, they wouldn't know. They don't, they don't get you that. Know, you can go, like you can look, LTL True Crime. You can go yeah. on there and look at the physical sites and I kick back all the time. You know, I'll just kick back money and to help no. their defenses. 
Brian, they're not doing anything for the case, Brian. So I, I understand they, that they're, they they have to say something. They're, and they're, worst thing they can come up with is that word. And let them call. Let them call you a purple grifter. Who cares? <laughs> I don't. I don't freaking. Care. I've said it a thousand times. Yeah. Look, look into my eyes. Yes, we make money. And guess who makes money too? You motherfuckers, you. because yep. your channels are monetized too. And, and you're when doing you, the same thing. You make twice as much because you're talking about you're nonsense. talking about us. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, exactly. You're talking about stuff that you're making up. And now, and now, do something. I love it. If you're going to make the money on YouTube, the, the, the three fifty dollars, three dollars you're going to make in 50 cents, if you don't worry about that, Maybe you need to find another hobby. Literally, you know how much I make. You, we make off clicks. It's pennies. Like it's, it's pennies. I don't give a shit about it. I'm just here, and the and the, the 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 reason that I'm here is I'm advocating for someone. I'm speaking up. I'm getting her case out there. She is innocent of these charges, and we'll will we will see. Believe me, in about three weeks, it's over. It's done. Right. And, and Brendan says we're the some of the coolest grifters. I know he's obviously joking, but. I saw one of the one of the pay things was like 0. 0.309%. <laughs> I'm like, how do you get the nine? Where's the point nine come in? It's like it's just it's just funny. Yeah, is- it's it's funny. Anyway, all right, let's go. We can get he through uses, this. Um this one on the bottom one another five, 30 nine, minutes. Seven, that's in pink. Okay. And so what, what your dry test found is you know, you kind of described those neat sectors at the beginning, but in reality they're kind of more messy, correct? There are a lot more messy. And uh, from what you found from the actual field testing is uh, and tomorrow cover- night I'm going to have a I don't know why I felt the need to do this I like to celebrate things so I, tomorrow night at 8.15pm I'm going to be doing a uh, 15,000 subscribers uh, uh, subscriber celebration and you will see how much I will give back tomorrow night I have some amazing prizes uh, and, and give backs to the uh, the community so uh, come over and join that stream tomorrow, 8.15 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll hang out a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to wait till you see what I'm going to give away. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And I have some little fun gag gifts in there, too, that we're going to give away. It's going to be a nice time. We're just going to hang out. And, you know, we'll we'll talk a little Karen Reed and maybe some other cases or some current news. We'll have some laughs and hang out. And, uh you know, I, it'd be great if you all can be here. So uh, maybe I'll play my very first video on YouTube so everybody can see what my very first video was and kind of the ev- evolution of my channel. I'll go through that. So anyway. Bridge off this tower. Tomorrow's going to be great. It's going to uh, be fun tomorrow. Looks like it's just uh, south of Mar- <laughs> Not scratched. Anywhere anywhere in this better than scratched. Yes. Yep. And that's in that particular cycle. What sector is that again? That's our second one. Right. And then this green area, you could be anywhere in this green area. And potentially be getting coverage from this tower up north towards Brazil. Yes. Uh, and now there, there's some overlap, though. There is. Those, correct. So there's some areas where a phone could potentially affect <clears throat> either tower, correct? That's correct. Right. And um, but in two minutes, I mean, the call, I'm sorry, the calls are six minutes apart. Right. So, I mean, uh, within right. six minutes, That's what it's the phone about. both of these sectors at the same time. Okay. And, and just as a final point, uh, the, again, the sectors aren't exactly black and white, neatly drawn, correct? correct. Right. And so, in reality, like this little green corner above this tower, a phone could be in that area and still be pinging off this sector. Yes, of the top. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And this this coverage is something that you told the jury about the drive. Thank you, Carrie. Right? And that's when you guys went out. With Thank you so much for the, the for the chat. In all these areas, correct? Yes, sir. we drove all these roads, and again, that equipment every few seconds it's recording the GPS point. I'm working it's on measuring it, the yes. signal level from all the towers and sectors. Thank you. And then what I do is I go in and I can read the tower and sector that was used by looking at the call detail records, and I can go in and select the coverage area or this blob for that tower and sector. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, and we see now- Thank you, I appreciate that. Starting at what, 920, 34, correct? Yes, sir. So at 920, uh, from 920 to 946, uh, there's a handful of calls, uh, all using tower 159, 217, but using sector two that kind of faces towards the Almeida address. Okay. Um, and then there's also one RTT hit at two, um, at 934 at about 2.09 miles, uh, which is consistent with being in the area of the Almeida uh, residence. Okay. And that starts at, it, he's, that phone's within the sector it's starting at what time? 920. Okay. And it last uh, phone call on that sector is at what time? 946. And Almeida's in that sector, correct? It is. Uh, but if a car were driving up this road towards Warrenville, <laughs> and I believe that's highway, 
378 or 278, yes. excuse me. That's still on the same sector. Correct? It is. So yes. if someone's in a vehicle on that 278 right there in that sector, you would get the same information. Yes. And so uh, uh, so at 946, if a car has already left Alameda and we're on 278, it would still ping in that same. It should, yeah. <laughs> Go on to the next slide. And this is still out. It is. It's just a zoomed in version of the last slide. Okay. So it's the same information, but looking closer, and I probably should have made some of those points on this one, but <laughs> we see that road at 278, you're correct. Yes. Sir. Within that sector. And there's Alameda, it's also in the same sector, correct? It is. Right. And so, in theory, unless it, for the RTT hit at 934, the phone could be anywhere in this arc. Correct? It could be anywhere in that arc. And for the rest of these hits, it could be anywhere within this whole sector. It could be anywhere between this tower and sector and the next one in that direction. Okay. Um, okay. All right. We'll go back. This is the next slide. This again, uh, Alex Murdoch's phone, correct? Yes, it is. All right. And um, we see some hits starting at 9.52, 59 p.m., correct? Yes, sir. So 9.52, 59, the phone's using the sector with the 240 in it. So it's not using the one that faces towards Almeida yet. I'm sorry, towards um. Moselle yet? Yep, and the red, and the, what's the red? It's Moselle. And the green? is Alameda. Okay, so just in the previous slide, you saw the phone down here in the area of, of uh, Alameda, correct? Yeah, it was using that tower near Alameda, but facing Alameda. And by 9.52 p.m., 59 p.m., uh, the Alex's phone is, is paying off of, uh, this tower right by Barnville, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat this, the question? Uh, where, which no, tower? Not, 9.52 and 9.53, the phone is using the tower closer to Moselle, okay. but on the sector facing towards uh, Barnville. Okay, all right. And then... Uh, and then we have a 1006 hit, 31, yep. correct? Yes, sir. And do you recall uh, what particular phone call was placed from Alex's phone at 1006 and 31? That was a 911 call. All right. And it hits off of which tower? It hits off of the tower closer to Bourneville. Okay. Uh, but then at 1017, there's another uh, hit with Alex's phone. And which sector is it being off? That's, you, that's using uh, the, sec the zero azimuth, so sector one that faces towards Mazel. So that initial 911 call uh, hit off this tower down way down here by Bourneville. Correct? It did. And that was one of the reasons you were called in to help figure out why that happened, correct? Right? I was, and I figured out why it happened. It's because, um, so in, in radio frequency, uh, the higher the frequency, the shorter the distance that it can travel. Uh, the lower the frequency, the longer it can travel. So on this tower, there's two different sets of sectors. <clears throat> one is at a higher frequency, and one is at a lower frequency. Um, wow. So this call here happened on a lower frequency, <laughs> and therefore the signal can travel slightly. <laughs> wow. So it's, in your opinion, it's consistent that the phone could have been up here at Moselle, at the time of that, uh, 1006. Uh, it could happen, yeah. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Yeah, next slide. Right. And, and we're going to come up on them in a, in a little bit. I just to... try to give everybody a little time because I know, you know, it's like 930. I know people have to work and stuff tomorrow. People are getting tired. We probably have another probably 25 minutes. You all right, Tom, or you need to go? Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm really into this. I'm just listening, you know. I, it's really I, good. I do need to pee. Yeah, go. Shut your camera and go, whatever you need to do. Take your time. I'll be right back. Yeah, take your time. I'm here. More detail, keep rolling. Uh, I'm actually actually yeah, What's that's that? It. I just had to let everybody know. <laughs> you can't uh you can't um you can't do that. It's not good for the prostate. Remember uh what is it? Uh liar liar. He's <laughs> like if I don't if I keep holding this in, it's gonna hurt my prostate. And the judge is like, Oh, I I I gotta if that's the case, I gotta go to the bathroom too. All right, let's go. This is it. Yes, sir. All right, uh, so what information do we see on this slide? So this is the tower and sector being used at 952 and 953. And again, this blob shape here, that's the coverage area for that tower. No, I just try to be kind to everybody, you know, because I understand it's late. You know, it's getting late. I'm good. I stay up till like almost 1 o'clock in the morning every night. <laughs> we'll um, keep going. It, it, go it, with it. Mostly in the center here, but there are some dots out. Like most of it kind of faces towards Barnville. Okay. And the calls at 952, 953 occurred somewhere within this sector. Correct? Yes, it did. And that <coughs> with the slightly shaded area represents the actual real coverage that you would have to measure where that phone could have been. I love Tom's little area. I love it. Right, and we zoomed in here, correct? Yeah, so we zoomed in again. Now we're zoomed in kind of on the Moselle uh, property. Yeah, we're going to do more of this. I like Tom having Tom here. There from this tower sector. And on, again, on that property. Which tower is this? The tower that's closest to Moselle. Oh, yes. shit. Yes. That means the bills are out. You actually see some actual coverage area right there. Yes. They play the bills. The red is, is right there, correct? Yes, the red is runs out. Oh, man. Okay. I want to go. Uh, 
uh, again, red is Moselle, and this is that tower just down south of Barnwood, correct? It is. Uh, so that's the tower, the tower south that's of Barnwood. That's tough because I, I, when the Pats are out, I like KC and I like Buffalo, but I really wanted Buffalo to win. I want jo Josh Allen to win one. I, I like him. Fuck. KC going. All right. Looks like I'm rooting for KC. Bill, or near Barnville, facing north. I know, I know all the Pat family. I hate me right now. <laughs> so the signal goes a lot further. Actually, there's little specs all the way up here to your uh, end. Okay. So this is Barnville, this is Moselle, and this is the coverage that you actually went up, excuse me, and measured in real uh, real equipment. <coughs> and you've determined all these shaded peak areas if a phone, a phone could be covered in this tower sector in those peak areas. Yes. And we see some of that peak area up right by uh, Moselle. Right? We did, yes. Next slide. All right. And this is uh, a, a 1017 feet, correct? Yes. All right. And it's in that sector. Now we're back to the tower that's uh, closest to Moselle, correct? It is. Uh, and that's that north facing sector? Yes, it is. All right. And here we see, again, a 911 call at 10 6, 31 p.m., correct? Yes, sir. That originally themed off of this uh, Marmville tower, correct? Yes. Uh, but we see this is the two coverages overlaid between these two towers that both have coverage in those zones, correct? Yes, it is. And you see so Lee Baker says, uh, thank you for the 1999, by the way. It was very nice of you. Uh, Lee says, I'm behind the stream. Issue they had was Maggie's iPhone was storage dumps, old data uh, to new, worrying, retrieving McAlbert's data now, unless they have iCloud backing it up, which would decide the amount of FBI gut all this prior. What do you think, Tom? Yeah. They have it. Absolutely. There's, there's big storage data centers they call them but it's storage yeah uh, buried under the sand and out in the middle of nowhere in nevada yeah. like those data centers i've been in some of them they save all the information that you're requesting on your phone so if right now if we all do a search for a new alexa every single person's phone recorded that and it's stored in some big database in nevada right now everything you do yeah, they have rooms of super servers and computers that keep all this data. It's nuts. Yep. Big server rooms. So, you know what I think I'm going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to, because I've been doing the continuation of just playing the old hearings because I like to get caught up on them. I think we did May 25th. July is the next one. I think I'm going to play that one tomorrow on the live. Karen's July hearing because um, I've been meaning to do that. So maybe we'll do that tomorrow. I don't know. I got to plan something. I didn't think of something. You're going to take a break, man. Don't burn out. We need no, you. No, I never take a break. I know. You need to. There's no stop. No stopping me. A little bit. No, this is important, Tom. It is. It's but very important. It's a Listen, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Remember that. I know that. I've had to take a, take a day or two to myself and just like shut the phone off. I've done that a few times. Yeah. I have to. Mike from Young Jerks is doing it right now. He's just taking a step back. And they're telling you, you see things a lot differently when you just take a step back. You really have to. I don't know. I'm not ready to. See, I need to keep pushing forward. From that tower up right on the Moselle property, correct? Yes. But you see more from the green uh, from this tower sector that covers that same property. That's right. So, in, go ahead. Next slide. And here we're zoomed in, correct? Yeah, we're zoomed in now, and now we have both of the coverages showing. So we're showing the pink, which is from the tower down by Varnville facing north, and then the green, which is from the tower right here close to Moselle, also facing north. And you can see there's coverage from both of those towers actually in the area of accounts. Okay. Uh, and in your opinion, that phone could have been right in that area for both these phone calls at 10.06 and 10.17. Yeah. Yes. And that's how it's a correct? Yes. Uh, and it does appear there's more coverage from the green sector off of this closer tower. Right? There is. Okay, and this is just the remainder of the night for Alex's phone, correct? It is again, uh, 10 19 to 11 18 p.m. Um, and the phone mostly uses that tower closest to Moselle. There is another hit at 10 21 on the tower near Bonneville. Next slide, all right. And then continuing, what's what's the date on so this is the next day at 6 yes. 8, correct? So this is June 8th, starting at uh 6 31 a.m. Ending at 8:54 a.m. and the phone's using the tower and sector consistent for being in the area of Almeda. Mm -hmm. So this is the morning after murders, correct? It is. Right. Next slide. Uh, 
and this is continuing the same. This is the next day, June 9th, of 24. It is, and uh, same tower, same sector. Uh, time period is 7:52 a.m. to 8:36 a.m. Next slide. All right, and here we see some information from June 10th of 2021. Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, from 3:32 a.m. to 8:49 a.m. Um, basically, using the same tower and sector here, uh, just to the left of Almeida, except for this one RTT hit at 3:32 in the morning, where that band overlays uh, on top of the Almeida address. Okay. Next slide. And now we're on June 11th for Alex's phone, correct? Yes. Again, in the morning, 3.52 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. And the, excuse me, the tower and sector consistent with being in the area. Okay. Next slide. And this is June 12th of 2021? Yep. Uh, 1.41 a.m. to 8.14 a.m. Again, using the same tower and sector near Alameda. Okay. Next slide, please. June 13th of 2021 for Alex's phone, correct? Uh, yep. First call in the morning is at 9.09 a.m. And again, using the same tower and sector consistent with Alameda. Okay. Next slide. Now we're on June 14th, correct? Yes, sir. And what are the times? Can we see uh, these things? 12.04 a.m. and then 9.53 and 9.55 a.m. Again, using that same tower and sector. And did you see any phone calls uh, from Alex's phone between 12 a.m. and 9.53 that you're having a tower permission? No. On that day? Yes, Next slide. And this is June 14th, later in the day, correct? It is uh, 10.27 to 12.29 p.m. Um, 10.27 a.m. to 12.29 p.m. Um, and now it's using the tower facing north out of Bourneville, but also using the tower facing into Hampton. Okay. Next slide. All right, and this is June 14th continued. Um, and does yes. that phone remain in the area of Almeida the rest of uh, June 14th, at least until 4 p.m. 16? Yes. Right, next slide. All right. And then here we're on June 14th yep. and starting at 4.33 p.m. up to 6.08 p.m. Where do we see uh, Alex? So I'll answer this really quick. Tom's definitely going to be there. Um, I'm trying to get my – I'm trying to work around it. My natural day off this week is Wednesday and Sunday. I'm going to try to get Thursday off to be there to support. If I can't make it, I just can't make it, unfortunately. I will 1,000 million percent. I'm telling you right now, Tom, if I have to quit my job, I will be at the hearing in that, February. Don't worry about that right now. There may not even be a hearing. In right. February. But if there's a hearing, I will if I cannot get that day off, I will quit my job. I don't see this going. I mean, how much more can the feds allow this to go on? Like they know, they know what they're putting Karen through. They know what, what Aiden's going through. Uh, Bradle's PI got arrested for Christ's sakes. I mean, that's, that's a reason for the feds to say, all right, enough of this just nonsense, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. You're right. You are right. Move, it moves uh, generally from um, uh, there, just south of uh, Almeida, over towards Charleston. And that's this area, and it's specifically, uh, I don't know if you can read it, but what is that? There? Can you read that place name where that last tower is on the map? <clears throat> Does that say Somerville? All right. Next slide. Okay. June fourteenth continued. Yes. And. This is up in the area of the, the same Somerville, correct? Yeah, this is in the area of Somerville. So between 6.08 p.m. on the 14th and 8.10 a.m. on the 15th, all the calls hit that tower and sector in Somerville. Okay, next slide. All right, and then on June, uh, later that June 15th, what do we see the phone do uh, on June 15th? It travels from uh, Somerville back to Hampton between 8, uh, 8.10 a.m. and 11.40 a.m. Okay, next slide. All right, and then now we're on June 15th for Alex's phone. And what two towers is his phone pinging off of for most of the day? Yeah, the one in. Uh, what you need, Tom? Down, 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 down. Go down two. Up, yep. Wow. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Like someone's someone gonna pay back a cool million. Wow. Oof. I did hear something about him, uh, the family uh, distancing themselves from the uh, other parties. Smart move, if you ask me. I did hear John O'Keefe's family just recently in the last couple of days distancing themselves from the parties in question. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, I've been hearing some buzzing too, Tom. I've just stayed yeah. really quiet about it. It all makes sense. It really does. Because it's not you know? confirmed, and I'm not going to put anything out there. But I think, Olivia, you approached it very wisely. And, and you know, you, you got to wonder. If, 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 if you were in their family's position, 
and you had this massive crowd and this big movement of thousands of people from all over the country, all over the freaking world now. If you yeah, have, we have Australia in here tonight. I know that. They, they, everywhere. Don't you just take a minute and pause and say, what's going on over there? Like, you got to look and find out, is is that real or 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 is it me? Yeah. I think they're at that point. Unfortunately, it would have been nice if they had reached that point earlier. But whatever. And again, everybody in the chat. If his family decides to to come over to the side where we want to inform them, they're more than welcome to come open arms. We will welcome them. We will hug them. We'll treat them like our own. So, yeah, I mean, look at here's Australia. We got Australia here. Uh, Let's see. Where to go? Chat real quick. There's Sydney, Australia. We have a Tuscan. Look at this. You know, everybody from all over the world knows about everywhere. It's awesome. Yep. I love it. All right. Let's keep playing here. Farmville facing north and the one in Hampton facing towards Farmville. Next slide. Uh, and then uh, June 15th. Uh, and this phone is consistent with the remaining in the area of uh, Alameda during those times, correct? Yes. And those are 12.45 p.m. to 2.33 p.m., correct? Yes. Next slide. Okay. Uh, and just real quickly for these last three slides. We also reviewed the records of C.B. Rowe and Marty Cook, correct? Yeah, yes. of course. We want to make sure murders, we want to make sure we put that out there. Olivia said, don't quote me on that, by the way. I'm just sharing what I saw on Twitter again. Again, it's unconfirmed that it could be a rumor, but we shall see. And everything that you and I say is opinion based. It's, opinion. it's just our opinion. And we're not saying we're right. And I'm wrong all the time. Mm-hmm. I can give you references on that one. Yeah. Every single thing here we've said is just opinion today. Yep. Thousand percent. In my opinion. And in your opinion. Allegedly. The information you can see from their call records and their tower information uh, were either those phones uh, in the vicinity of the uh, murder location uh, between 8.50 p.m. and 9.00 p.m. I forgot to put the screen up. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <coughs> Not far from the state. So I'll stand for a moment. taking a break patrick yeah patrick made a made a comment must be hard for the family i i absolutely agree i mean it must be tough oh there must be oh there's a break oh that might be it no we got a little testimony here we'll come back a break i had a break facebook bob all right we'll come back here Yes, the world is watching. Thank you for the 10. I appreciate that. We're going to actually, this is going to wrap up in about 10 minutes. But, you know, if we have some final words, we can get all that in too. Naples, Florida. Yeah. Where's everybody from? Well, let us know. Where are you from? Put it in the chat. Good afternoon, Agent. Well, good afternoon, sir. All right. So this is going to be cross, any question. cross examination. You know, this won't take long at all. Um, we were looking at a lot of maps and they had a lot of timestamps. And we'll I slow it down so we can hear this. Sometimes they're not, they're not pinks. So uh, what are they? They're activations on the record. So whether they be um, incoming or outgoing phone calls or those RTT activations, which are uh, slightly different um, or the other things with Paul's phone, those are like the iPhone location data uh, records. Look at all those people. But we're Tom. looking at calls, <laughs> text messages with a text message. Um, make one of those timestamps. No, so on Verizon, what? Um, which all the phones in this case were, What's uh, that? Verizon, we're not going to get uh, call detail records. Oregon, look at this. Data with the Washington data. State's up there. Yep. The way they're designed. South Coast. And I just wanted to be clear That's when we warm. said that there weren't any more calls coming into Maggie, Maggie Murdoch after 7, that there were some text messages, but wouldn't, if there were, they wouldn't show up. Correct. Morning. They wouldn't show up in her call detail records with cell tower information. Nice. What would it look like on these I'm, maps? I was if call, fan. Well, let me ask this. Do calls? I love wall fan. Hand Moody Street. I love it. While they're still going on. Fucking Moody they Street. And, and what would that look like on these maps? So it was. It would look the same way it looks now. So again, when the call, before the call is even set up. So if my phone was on in this room right now, my phone is constantly scanning the environment. It's trying to find the tower and sector with the strongest signal. Okay, it's very much like sitting at the airport, trying to find the best Wi-Fi to connect to while you're waiting on your flight. 
Um, so what happens when a call hands off between uh, tower between towers during a call is uh, the records look like they look. Uh, it's still going to show the initial tower and sector that the phone saw as the best tower and sector at the time the call occurred. And then after that, let's say the call is an hour long and I drive from here to Columbia, um, you know, I'm going to hand off tower to tower to tower, but on Verizon, I'm not going to see that handoff in the records. Right. And that, that, I guess, was my question is you're just going to see that first tower. So if you're handed off like tower one to two to three, you're not going to see on the same calls hits on towers two and three on this map. Correct. You're only going to see the, the initial. And do the coverage areas intentionally overlap to some degree to allow for handoffs? Yes. And we saw um, GPS data uh, for Paul Murdoch's phone. He's yes. live on Adam Street. Um, did you have any GPS Adam data Wolf, for Maggie yeah. Murdoch's phone? I did not. Married. There was uh, nothing in the location database for, uh, for the time period that was in question. Do you know why that was? I, it's either uh, something Paul was running on his phone that generated it or a lack of something that Maggie wasn't running on her phone that did not generate it. I really don't know the answer. To that. I mean, so the answer would be that you don't know. I don't know. Yes. Sir. And what about uh, Al uh, Murdoch's phone? Um, there was nothing during the time period. So you mentioned that you test, you've testified as an expert in, I think, over 100 cases. Yes, sir. And in some of those other cases, were you able to show phones moving together? Sometimes we are, yes. Were you able to do that in this case? I did not do that in this case. When you were doing the, the drive around um, to create that sort of coverage map, did you go onto the, the Moselle property? I did. Uh, was that with the consent of Scotland. Al Scotland. Yes, it was. Sir. Tom, Scotland. Oh. That's awesome. That's out there. Yep. Yeah. That's almost halfway. Yeah. That's almost halfway. Yeah. We need like Romania. Pull up uh, slide 35. Wisconsin. Can you see the, the screen? I can. And I think the previous testimony was that this 10.06.31 call was the 911 call? Yes. Um, I just want to ask about that timestamp because um, we, we heard from someone from the FBI yesterday the 911 call was actually placed at 10.06 and 18 seconds. So what would account for the 13 seconds difference between the two? I guess it depends on the records you were looking at. It'd be a, it, there might be a slight offset between the records the other person was looking at and the records I was looking at. And the 911 call center, of course, would have a timestamp on incoming calls. Correct. Correct. Have you ever seen cases where there's a few seconds difference between those timestamps and this kind of record <coughs> of what the 911 center might have? Yes, sir. I mean, there's a, there's a difference between the, when you press the green button and it usually takes a couple of seconds to connect on the other side. And could we on the Elmo go to slide 56? And the reason I, I would like to do this on the Elmo is I think that the presentation was cutting off the bottom the screen it was and this can we see the top so we can kind of get context for what this is just yeah slide it down so that the top is visible so this was alec murdoch information and this was on june 15 2021 correct yes sir and you know that's tuesday i i don't um can we scroll in so we can see the bottom it says that activity after 2.33 p.m. indicates travel to Somerville. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any data after that? Is that the end of the data that you have regarding Alec Murdoch? Is that the last slide? Uh, you have. <laughs> okay. Slide. So this is slide 56 that we're looking at. Yeah, there was other data after that. And do you have location data for Alec Murdoch after Thank June you. 15? Thank I you. I think so. I think in this report? Not in this Thank report. Thank you. 
so in this report, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, because that's yeah. you know, what we're looking at here. Yes, sir. Because um, I understand, of course, you have cell phone records. He kept using the cell phone, obviously, after the 15th. Yes, he did. But for what's being presented to the jury, the last entry is, uh, I'll represent you know, Tuesday, June 15, is the, the end of what you have. Yes, it is. And he's going to summer there. Yes, sir. And finally, um, the uh, last two or three slides, we don't need to show them. There was some information for some other people, a CD, CB Rowe, uh, uh, a Marty Cook. Yes, sir. Why did you have, why were you looking at information for them? I was requested to look at the information for them for the night of the incident. Were you requested to ever look at information for an Eddie Smith or a Spencer Roberts? Eddie Smith sounds from, uh, sounds, uh, sounds familiar, uh, but I'm not sure about Spencer Roberts. Did you look at information regarding uh, Eddie Smith? Yes. Do you have that information with you? I do not. You do not have the information? I don't have it with me. No. Thank the court's indulgence. All right, this is just basically cross. It's not really going to add too much, but I wanted to just give everybody kind of a scope of, you know, how all this stuff works, how that geofencing works. And I hope that everybody found value in this stream. I think they did. I mean, everybody was like, this is a great stream. So what do you think, Tom? I think that your phone tells them more about you than you could ever tell them yourself. And, and it's all there. Like, you can't get rid of it. What you did yesterday is in your phone mm -hmm. and it's in the data center right now. So yeah. good luck getting rid of that. Do I think the feds have it all? Absolutely. Have they had it? I think they have. I think they've been in town since Sandra Birchmore. I think they saw what happened. I think they absolutely were in town when this whole thing went down. And I think they actually have all the players. In your opinion. That's what I think. That's just yeah. what I think. I mean, it, if the the feds never lose, right? They've been in town for how long has this been going on? How long have we right. heard about the feds? Years? That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Think of the budget. You can't go into Boston and walk into the FBI office and say, open an investigation into this DA. Mm -hmm. Where's that money coming from? Who's mm -hmm. got that in their budget? Because that we're talking real money here, right? Like real agents, real investigations, a lot of time, effort, manpower. That's budgeted money, right? And they have to have they have to get a return on their investment. So that's why they have a 99.6 success rate, right? They need a return on that investment that they're making, spending all this money on lawyers, blah, blah, blah. There's no way they can't have all of this data because it's just a I got it right there. Click, click, they got it. It's not hard to get, and it's not like they haven't used it before. That's the problem I have. That all of a sudden we can't believe data. Real, just really. Well, and then it goes back to you know why is it going to be relevant in the Walsh case, but not relevant here? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Quamley yeah. says feds have a ninety nine point six percent success rate. Yeah, yep. it's pretty incredible. Mary says thank you, Tom. Thanks for the subs and everyone who was friendly all night. Yeah, absolutely. We have a friendly chat over here. We're we're serious. You know, this is uh, it's about Karen. It's about you know freeing Karen and. Aiden and you know we just try to keep it all relevant that's what yep. we try to do I think for tomorrow what I'm going to do fans is this uh, I'm going to run the celebration stream at 8 o'clock we're going to give away some prizes and then I just don't feel it's right to run that court hearing during a celebration stream so how about we do this I'm going to have two streams set up we're going to celebrate for about a half an hour we're going to give away some gifts and then what we'll do is we'll channel that right over into the next stream and we'll watch the July 25th hearing. I think that's the one on the next one I had to do. So we'll do July 25th. That's only an hour after that. So we'll get about an hour and a half of content in tomorrow night. If you all want to come over out. Yeah, I'm going to just. They just keep getting better and better. As you watch them, the trials, mm -hmm. they get better and better and better. And you're going to like, you're going to like keep rooting for for. For Yanetti, Jackson, it, Little, everybody, you Aaron. know, it, it, even Liza Little, she's yeah. dynamite every yeah, single time. She's she's up, every time 
So that's what I think I'm going to do. So when I end this live, because it's still kind of early for me, I'm going to get a tile up for that tomorrow. So the celebration tiles hey, up. Sit, bud. Take a break. Why don't you take a nap? <laughs> can never stop, Tom. Me, I man. can't stop until Karen is free. Uh, yeah, neither can I, but you will not stop until it's Karen. A marathon, is free. bud. Marathon, not a sprint. You I got will not stop until Karen is free. Yeah. So um, so that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. And then maybe I can find something else that we can play. Um, and we'll have kind of a little case review. I'll get some turtle boy stuff in probably. So tomorrow night, 8 p.m. we'll start. It'd be great if you all can come over and join me. I'm gonna give away some really cool shit tomorrow. You're gonna want to be here. And you're going to have to be here to be able to claim those prizes till the end of the stream. And then what we'll do is um, we'll just parallel that or transfer it right over into my next stream. And we'll fire up and do uh, the July 25th hearing and and go through that. And um, I think there's some Turtle Boy stuff I want to do tomorrow, too. So that'll be the plan. Did I get? Oh, Carrie Ann, thank you so much for the super sticker. I'm, I'm so rude that I didn't call that out. <laughs> thank you uh tom you're welcome tomorrow night if you want to do the trial with me yeah i'm more than happy i just i love this this is this is you guys a great great crowd yep if you want to come yeah. hang out you can it's up to you let me yeah. know i'll no. drop you the link and yep. uh send it over and okay. just make sure everybody hits the uh thumbs up we need the uh, algorithms to uh push this some more and there's people tonight that just come across the channel i saw it in the chat they mm -hmm. just found it you know yeah, welcome and, in and that helps that's because somebody hit the like someone hit the share it, yep. That's how it gets out there. And we look at, we're, are, we're in, where are we? Around the freaking planet, guy. We're already around the world here. Yeah, and let me do this. Uh, hang on one second. Do, do, and then we'll wrap up. The merch you just put in the store. He's got awesome merch. If you want to take a peek in Brian's store, it's all dynamite stuff. I Thank love you. it. Yep. And let's do this. If you haven't subscribed to Tom's channel, he is the epic live streamer. He live streams outside uh, the court hearings for Karen and Aiden all the time, like eight hour live streams. He usually gets like 3000 people in there. We need to start getting those 3000 people subscribed to your channel. So why don't we do this? We got Tom's link in the chat. Go over and give Tom a, a, a subscribe. He does lives on Karen Reed as well. Is is very informative, very team orientated. And, um, you know, he, he brings his different perspective to what we do here. And you can't get on Tom here. Uh, you you got to love his nook. I love his little nook all the time. He's got, stuff. He's got different, different. Yeah, it's just stuff. You know, the joke about stuff, right? I can't remember the, oh, George Collins. George Collins said it, yeah. Stuff when you get stuff and we love stuff. And More then, stuff. You have, yeah, you have that stuff for a little while. And yeah. then, and then after a while, you get rid of that stuff so you can make room for more stuff. <laughs> I, I earn these trophies. I ain't going back to get more. I'm good. I, I'm yeah. happy with what I got. Good for you. Yeah. All right, kids. We're going to roll out. It's about 10 o'clock. I'm going to get some rest. <laughs> Maybe. Thank everybody for being here. Brian's yeah. going to go to work now. I'm like, going to go to work now. All night long. His light, his light like burns out. He's a guy that burns out light bulbs. Okay, people. He's got to keep buying them. But My listen, everybody, thank everyone for being here and listening for us. Just, you know, yip and yap. By the way, I need to make an announcement. So I made an announcement. Um, I've been having some health issues and uh, a while back and I've been trying to get that under control and I've controlled my diet and got back on a good diet. I've lost about eight pounds. You probably can see it in my face because a lot of people are going, oh, you look skinnier. So I've lost about eight pounds now. And the reason for this, and I got to get blood work on Wednesday. The reason for this was my blood pressure was deadly high, crazy. It hit at one point was 200 over 95. You can't mess with that. That's the one thing you so, got one of those. You have two lungs, two kidneys. Yeah. One eye. You don't mess with that, but right. that's a that's um, so from 1230 when I started monitoring it at home, I was 158 over 95. Whoa. And in the last couple of weeks, it's come down. My best reading this morning was 132 over 86. Do you have so a I'm, watch? you have a watch that does it for you? No, I have an actual medical yeah. blood pressure with cuff. cuff. With a cuff? Okay. Listen, the watches they have now, you can set parameters on them. So if you go over a certain amount of heartbeats per minute, yeah. you trip off and let you know. So those watches are decent. And again, they talk, 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 talk. 
but this morning was my best reading at 132 over 86. Good. Um, I got to send my results to the doctor in about two weeks. Yep. The good thing is I'm out of the danger zone. Yeah. Right. And I've come down into pre hypertension. So maybe I can get down a little bit more. Um, and that's because I overwork myself. You think <laughs> you, that's got nothing to do with it? Just no, no, not even a little bit. And, um, and I will say this the other day, uh, at work, I had to leave. I had a very scary episode of, uh, migraine with Aurora. I don't know if you know what that is, but you get, um, flashing lights in your eye and it you think you're having a stroke but you're not really having a stroke and they tend to pass in about a half an hour and this is probably the third one i've had in maybe five or six years i don't get any pain it doesn't hurt but it's scary and i had to leave work and come home and lay down and it went away and it actually happened on the night I was supposed to go live with melanie little i didn't think i was going to make that stream i literally laid down and i looked up at the sky and I'm not a God-fearing man, but I said, you need to make this happen. And he made it happen if God is up there. And <laughs> thank you. But um, not for nothing. In two weeks, I got an eye doctor appointment. And the reason I have an eye doctor appointment is Ocular my mom has glaucoma. Really, She has end-stage glaucoma. She's going, she's pretty much blind now. And now I need to start taking care of my eyes. The problem is I've rejected glasses for a long time. And I know that's probably why I'm having these eye issues. So my eyes are burned out from, uh, remember those, those green screen monitors? Oh shit. So when you look at computer monitors for your work and you all day long, you, you blow your eyes out, but listen real quick, Brian, Yeah. and not for nothing. My mother had something similar mm -hmm. and what it was is her carotid arteries were clogged with plaque. They checked mine. All right. So they did check your karate. Yeah, when I went up, he listened to my karate and they were fine. Yeah. But you just as a thought, blood flow is kind of the whole thing that they think with, with migraines, less blood here, more blood mm -hmm. there. Right. And right. It, it triggers like an imbalance and start freaking out. But all right. So you checked that. So, I mean, uh, I listen, you got to get that taken care of. Dude. Yeah. I get some blood work on Wednesday. I'm getting finally getting done because I never have any time, but I'm going to do it Wednesday. It's important. Um, and, uh, panic on the way to work, dude, and just stop and just give him a vial, yeah. you know, No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Wednesday. I have it all set up. I just got to go. Right. Wednesday's good. So I'm, I'm feeling better. Um, <laughs> yeah, my head looks smaller. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm so feeling diet, better. Definitely uh, diet, right? Diet's a big thing. You think diet is huge, dude. And the funny thing is I never really ate shitty, but I kind of did. I ate a lot of like chips and shit which is bad. And I used yep. to do that when I got home at work. Cause I would be, I got to fill myself. I got to fill myself. So I would just be eating salty chips and crackers and shit. And it's not good for you at 45 years old. Uh, and I used to drink at least one diet Coke a day. You can't do that when you're 45. No. The diet Coke, I used to diet eat Coke, bad, 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 right. bad. And I would go through a gallon of ice cream every two days. You know, well, I, I understand that. That's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> Loud. <laughs> I I uh clean my diet up, lots of brown rice, lots of uh non-processed meats, just fresh meat, uh vegetables. I'm eating bananas, I'm eating apples, like I'm really taking care of myself and uh working out like I've always done. But this is important because I'm I'm in the danger zone. You can have a stroke or you can have a heart attack, and I have stroke in my family, and I don't I want to be here for a long time. I still think I have a lot to say in this world and a lot to do. Uh, and just like everybody in this chat, you all are here and you all have um, so many more amazing things to do in this life. Um, and I all I want every single one of you here uh, I, and, I, and Tom, you have amazing things to do and you've done amazing things and you have a lot more amazing things to do. So we yep. all need to be healthy. And I and, and you know what? I'm going to listen to you this week and I'm probably going to take a day or two off and just, rest. Just, just take one. And just take one and see how you feel from that. Just one day. I know I'm going to go through withdrawal. I can't do it. Just <laughs> I got to be here for the people. Just just don't. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it. I got I got something for you. You'll be all right. <laughs> all right. We're going to get out of here. I'm going to play the long intro tonight as the outro because I love it so much. So sit back three minutes. We'll hang out here. 
And then we're going to get out of here tomorrow. Celebration stream at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I would appreciate it if everybody can make it over. Really, I would. Um, and we're going to give away some fucking kick-ass prizes. And then right after that, it's going to take us right into the Karen Reed July 25th hearing. We'll do the hour. Hang out on there. Commentate. Have a good time. I think Tom's going to join me. And I love having Tom over here. So we'll do that. Okay, everybody. We're going to hit the outro. We'll see you tomorrow night. Everybody have a great night. Free Karen Reed. Talk to you soon. And Aiden. Yep. And fucking Aiden. We need him back. That yeah, motherfucker needs to be back here soon. <laughs> soon. And he misses all of you. I, I've talked to him briefly. Yep. Uh, he misses all of you and loves all of you. And he cannot wait to get back. It, it, he is going to be a motherfucker when he comes back. And I can't wait. Fill that chat with some turtles, people. Come yeah, on. Yeah, let's see the turtles. Let's see the hearts. Fill that turtles. chat. Let's do it. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. So it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. That was like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no, she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. We are using them. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the pond Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Didn't think to mind, something wicked, no alibi I think you true crime Don't go with dark realities every time Every time. Yeah, LTL, true